any mention? No mention. Wait for half a minute. In case someone comes in and it seems to be done.
supplementary list, pronouncement of judgment, item number one. The President's ordered remedy has held in the case of so and so cited by the Council Respondent Bank in the absence of any contingency or situation to warrant the fear of the Article 227, the incident case clearly covered by the judgment, uh, where Para 6 will have as follows. Uh, the petitioner, therefore, having recourse to alternative efficacious remedy under the Recovery of Debts and Bankruptcy Act 1993, in the fact, circumstances of the case, this matter in the consent of the court does not deserve any further consideration. Colleagues, stand this case, please. Yes. Any mention? May I please show Lordship? I beg to mention item number 43, Lordship. Number? 43, Lordship. 43, yes. May I sanction with Lordship? May yes. Sanction with Lordship. Conducting counsel. Yes. You may, please, Lordship. Argument is over and Mr. Pitti sought time to see the judgment now again. <laughs> He's seeking time today. You want cost? Lordship. <laughs> yeah. not he's, he's on leave just after one week. Yes. Two weeks, Lordship. One week. He's not coming back in two weeks. No. Not two weeks, are coming for two weeks. He will come. One week, one week. It's 19 matters. 43 and 42 connected with this. Yeah. Okay. One week, 43 44. On the prayer of, on the prayer of uh, the respondent. Yes. 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 May I be pleased, Lordship? I beg to mention item number 37 to 42, Your Lordship. 37 to 42. Where's Mr. Kurishi? He's on central leave. No, no. What you, you said you'll. These matters have no relevance. No, I, I did not say. We are just waiting for the countryman will be saved to Silong Municipal Board. Okay, thank you. For 42. three weeks' time, Your Lordship. Yes? Yeah? Three weeks' time, Your Lordship. How's Mr. Manta? He's still not well. He's still going for his uh, daily dress up. Okay, three weeks. Yes. As the Arian Senior Council Council for the uh, respondents still will be well further. Mr. Kurishi, what do you say? Because the last order court has passed that the, the municipal board will be shifted to the uh, wrong municipal board. Mr. Kurishi uh, further submits that uh, adjournment is necessary in view of the further developments that yes. are awaited with regard to the handing of several areas of containment to the state administration. This accordingly is concerned. Yes. Yes. Supplementary list, item number two. Please, please, Lord. This is a petition for transfer of a case from the court of the special judge Nongpo to any other court within the jurisdiction of Meghalaya. Now, my lord, the brief facts here is my lord, what has happened was the appeal, uh, the petitioner was convicted by the same court. And thereafter, an oh. appeal was appeal was preferred. My love, the, the same trial court, in a trial under, earlier conviction was earlier happened. conviction. So thereafter, an appeal was preferred, my lord. After hearing the appeal, the court came to a finding that the mandatory provisions of 317 were not followed. What had happened was that charges were altered, and when charges are altered, it is mandatory for the court to allow re-examination of the witnesses. So on that count, my lord, the matter was sent back to the trial court again. Unfortunately, when the matter went back to the trial court again, it was the same presiding officer. The moment he sees the Petitioner, my lord, he says you are not satisfied with five years. I'll send you to jail for ten years. My lord, apart from that, my lord, the entire trial, the way it is being conducted, my lord, the 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 the, the conducting counsel, the defense counsel is not allowed to examine the witness properly. We are not allowed to bring documents to show that there is a civil dispute looming large behind the entire case. And my lord, I will not get justice over there, my lord. My lord, so I will casting as questions on the setting of my lord. I sadly, my lord, I have to, my lord, I have no choice. There is absolute bias, my lord. District. This is from? From Longpo, my lord. And in fact, my lord, the matter was fixed yesterday. And the matter is again fixed tomorrow. My lord, the... It's, it's, like, it's like the court has made up its mind, my lord. Ah, may it please your lordship. Lordship, kindly come to the uh, page 6, uh, paragraph 5, your lordship. These are the crown. Yes. Ah, uh, lordship, uh, uh, from the appraisal of this crown, your lordship, it appears, your lordship, that there is a serious allegation has been made against the presiding officer, your lordship. 
and in the view of the matter, if these are the allocation, your lordship, then he, the presiding officer will have to be given a notice, your lordship. He has a right to be heard. No, not the notice, but then. Can you see, your lordship? Formal, there? Can you see the crown? Has to be a formal sort of. A then so far, uh, so far, crown seven, uh, crown stated in para seven, your lordship. Can you see, your lordship? During recording of a uh, 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 recording of then of the PWs, uh, lordship, uh, the uh, presiding officer is within his right, your lordship, because he cannot remain a mere recording machine. See, that's yes, right. Machine, uh, but the the right, not, right, is the apprehension right. in the sense that they're not going to get a fair trial. You understand? That is, uh, uh, lordship, uh, if, if this. Just, no. Uh, lordship, in my humble and respectful submission, your lordship, this are, uh, cannot be a, a crown for transfer of criminal cases, your lordship. No doubt. This is only a, a mere uh, observation, uh, whether these are, whether these are uh, facts uh, set by the presiding officer. Only the state, my lord. Only the state. My lord, uh, this is not the first time when such a complaint has been made. Such, a, such a application with file also. My Lord, because uh, Lordship, if I do not get a fair trial, well, of course, if I am guilty, I may be sent to jail. Not for 10 years, but 20 years, but at least Can give me a fair Lord. opportunity to at least conduct the trial. And well, I am not the only one making a complaint against this particular presiding officer. But there are 200 secretaries to a complaint which was sent before this Honorable High Court from the Shillong Bar Association. His court was even boycotted for the same reason, my Lord. I have reasonable apprehension. And I have just not just made up, well, in case if Lordship, at the end of the day, comes to a finding this petition is frivolous, my lord, exemplary cost may be imposed on me. No, but on the materials that are here, it's difficult, you see, to... Uh, can you see, your lord? As honest, you... you well, I, I, will, I will demonstrate, my lord, just kindly stay the matter for today. Give me some time, my lord, I will bring everything. Because I was given a very little time, my lord. Take down. <coughs> uh, this is an application for transfer of <coughs> a special... Boxo case number 45,015 pending before the court of the special judge in bracket Boxo, P-O-C-S-O, Haribai <coughs> district to any other court of special judge. So, uh, next paragraph, Mr. KCH Gautam, then at counsel for the which has submits that the British has been constrained to file this application for transfer in view of the manner of conduct of proceedings by the court of the special judicial uh, special uh, special, special judge Poxo court special court. Poxo, special judge Poxo court Poxo. <coughs> district non <-Pong. coughs> stop where Where he apprehends that he will not be given a fair trial, and further that the court is proceeding on a preconceived notion. Stamp. Next paragraph is Andy Shulai, Leonard AG, with so and so, has raised strong objections and submitted that. The learned court below is well within its rights. In conducting the proceedings as a medium fit for the ends of justice. And that no grounds have been made in the instant petition which will warrant a transfer stamp. Like Parabita said may as serious allegations have been raised in the present petition. The petitioner is permitted to produce additional materials in support of his prayer in the form of certified copies of order sheets. Stop. <coughs> in the interim, he has provided that till the next date for the proceedings in the in what's that special box of care 45 of 15 pending before the court of the special judge of the by district shall remain stayed. When can you file it? 
three, four weeks, my lord, because I'll have to apply. Yeah. Two weeks doesn't matter. Three weeks, my lord. Two weeks doesn't matter. Lord. How apply your lordship? Much obliged. This has to be taken absolutely. Well, item number three. Mr. Paul is there. Mr. Paul is there. When Mr. Paul? Uh, my lord, uh, through VC, my lord. Oh, oh, he's there in a small window. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is a matter concerning where the petitioner was one of the tenderers in a tender that was spoken by the Assam <coughs> Now, after the tender was made we parted from the tender, we got an SMS month on the 1st of September 2023 that we have been disqualified. SMS on? 1st September. 1st September. Okay. We will also find that at page 46. Yes. The last five lines of your technical Yes. Technical evaluation of the number of sources is what? This is qualified. Yes. This is qualified service and the review of the reasons of projection and the ways of one time and a certification has seen GA. Yes. But there is a lot of longer to the portal that was to find the page 47 and call this page 48. This, this was what was there available on the On the last column, you can see comment. It says, Secretary disqualified due to shortfall of the following documents as per the conditions of the subject bidding. Invalid organization has been submitted, blank integrity, blank integrity, blank integrity, blank integrity, blank blank integrity, blank integrity, blank There was a blank in some uh, document numbers. Test is not neither in the name of OEM nor in the name of the bidder, but this is for information. Now, in terms of the tender, if you are not standing on the page 14. 40. Page 14. One, 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 four. one, 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 Time allowed for technical clarifications during technical evaluation. Okay. Time allowed technical yes. Now this two days. Two days. Yes. Right? Now what essentially happens was we will next that main document if you want to on the last page of the petition. Minus clarification of reason shortfall of documents. This is this is what that means. Page 50 is a bad copy, we'll also send you a patient. Yeah. And the yes. clarification of bid shortfall documents, by yes. the case of shortfall, you're watching to the motor. During the preliminary examination, some minor informality or and or irregularity and or non-conformity shortfall documents, non-sufficient documents may be found in some page. Some minor issues could be missing pages, attachments or illegality in a submitted document. Non publishing of required number of copies of the document. There has also been cases where the bidder submitted the emergent bag guarantee but omitted to submit the main portion of the bill. Such minor issues may be waived provided the same does not constitute any material deviation of and financial impact. Whenever necessary, observations of minor issues as mentioned above as may be agreed by the GA portal. During evaluation and comparison of bids, AI. May is uh, may at its discretion ask the request for clarification of the page. The request for clarification shall be given by the GM portal asking the builder to respond by a specific date and also mentioning then that if the builder does not comply or respond by the date, this page will be liable to be Now, my little issue with your logic is there were these three technical issues, minor falsehoods, shortfall of documents, this is called my business. Now, the, the Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Continue. Well, well, as per the tender, what I pointed out on page 14, yes. there is two a days. specific time frame to be filed. Two yes. days. So yes. they had to write to me seeking a clarification of these documents. Yes. Now, without doing that, what I have done is simply gone ahead and rejected my exam. Yes. Disqualified. 
to that you have to decide what was the challenge which you did against the rejection before you launched it. AI means what? Malot, that is what uh, I was trying to understand, Malot. It means normally it means airport authority of India, Malot. No, no, here it is not airport authority. What is this? AI. See, the I thing is that I during evaluation and comparison of bids, AI may at the discretion of the bidder for clarification of the bid. At its discretion. So, it's a discretionary kind of function. What is AI? But I, I, but I quite follow what this follow logic that this is a discretionary power. Yes. So whatever it is that, that, uh, that Alavan should have been shown to you, but what, who is AI? Where does this come from? This is from the gem portal? Yes, yes, yes. This is from the gem portal. So, what is AI? <laughs> Malot, uh, I have. Yes, I will have some time. Malot, that is only one aspect. Malot, Malot the real, real issue involved here, Malot. They participated in the tender as a reseller, Malot. With a, because there is an original equipment manufacturer Malot, called OEM, Malot, uh, technically. So they get no, only come back to the whatever it is. Malut. Now, uh, your according to your the technical disqualification was on those three points, correct? Yes. One is the Malut. that uh, invalid authorization, so on and so forth. Now, you see the invalid authorization is it, do you Malut. mean the misrepresentation is made by them with regard Malut. to absolutely, Malut. I'll place the document number. My lord, the come here up some time, get the thing. But if they see, even then, they shouldn't be entitled to some kind of uh, if no days time is given there, but this is entitled to some kind of a hearing. This was misrepresentation of facts, my lord, which cannot be corrected. You think cannot, cannot be corrected. that goes to the very root of their bit, my lord. Okay, we'll hear up, just up some time. Yes, all the more people in the world, all the more people in the world, all the more people in the world, all the more people yeah, but it was really before we passed it. Yes, we just, we just, yes, we just. Yes, fight any final. Main this item number one. Good luck. Well, this matter relates to the appointment of the Private response number seven is a deputy sardar. In the first read petition and second read petition is against the appointment of the same respondent for the post of acting chief. Others respondents have raised the question of maintainability, so they may take the yes, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Kenta, who's raised the question of maintainability? That's why it's for division hearing today. Well, it speaks yes. for admission. Okay. Okay. Yes, <coughs> so who has raised the question of maintainability? <coughs> I have uh, raised that point here, Lord Chief. Why? Uh, so happened, Your Lord Chief. I'm just having cold. Unable to um, argue this matter today, maybe in a day or two. Um, allergic, allergic reaction. Allergic to cold. Some problem. Oh. <coughs> you can do it virtually. Uh. Hmm. As the learned senior army council is uh, having some health issues, list this matter after one week. Same thing with item number two. Also. Number two is a senior. Uh -huh. Item number three. Number three also is done a special council, senior council list. Number. Mission number three. You see, matter? Matter is a different issue. It is the creation of a new village. However, we learned it in a special council. Yes. 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 <coughs> Item number four. After one Lordship, I would like to inform this court that analogous matter will be filed today, ma'am. As per the order dated 28 or uh, 23 8 2000. You said that another matter is being filed which will have an impact on this. Yes, yes. Has it been filed? Today, my lord, we will file it today. So, what you, should we wait for you until you file it or should we next, take up the matter week, now? Next week, my lord. We will be filing Mayala, today. In that case. Yes. Yes. My lord, in, that, in case it is eternal, may I say that let me be in, in that case in the first week of October? Yes. In case it is a German, a German phrase made on behalf of the petitioner. <coughs> Stop. 
Uh, MS uh, years ago I submits that uh, in the event a German, a German is granted, the matter may be fixed on 1st of October. Let it come 1st of October. Monday. According to this is the matter on the 1st of October. So yes. There is an interim order, but uh, it needs to be extended. Interim order is the next year. All right. Item number five. <coughs> May yeah, please, Lordship. Lordship, uh, the conducting senior counsel is on sanction leave, so we take up Ooh. this matter. So, let's check no, it out. Resolved. No, no. Item number six is resolved. We are not disturbing the possession of uh, the petitioner item number five at the moment. If Lordship, can you take up so, item number six? Yes, so five. Uh, yeah, Lordship, uh, yeah. I pray for two weeks' time. Yes. Two weeks' time? <coughs> two, two weeks. With the uh, number? Number five, number five, uh, number five. Uh, number five. Having senior councils on sanction is on leave. And this is matter after two weeks. Two weeks. Highly obliged. Sir, in the meantime, party has settled the item five and six both below, and agreements have also been signed below. Let him come and do the last rites then for five. Let's take item six. Lord, yes. in the meanwhile, we we'll bring this on record. Uh, yes. Lord, should accept this. This is a photocopy. Be no, this because it is without your uh, map. So we'll file a. No, that has the map. Okay, because one that of the maps has not been signed. So we'll There's bring it by the well. affidavit, your lordship. And this matter may come up after two weeks as. Uh, is it necessary? It is, your lordship. Because in the terms of this agreement. Uh, we will pass an order in terms of the agreement. We are not asking for disposal at the moment. So if can we have see not agreed to withdrawing the PPA proceedings. Also, your lordship. No, in why, view, in view of that, out, we need to bring this on record. I'll just point out the terms, my lord. Can so you I'm, have? I'm uh, not going into it as yet. Yes, yes. Till we bring it uh, before your lordship. Can you have page seven of the agreement? Yes. Uh, clause five. Yes. So the understanding is that these parties will vacate the occupied premises by the 26th of September 23. Yes. Next, lordships will find. Can you turn to page ten? Clause 17. Yes. So what we stated here is that upon execution of this agreement as a mark of good faith, the second party shall unconditionally withdraw all civil suits, miscellaneous applications, appeals, etc., filed by the parties of the other part, that is the second party, the tenants, before the civil courts in Shillong and produce certified copies of the said orders to the first party as and when it is made available. Upon vacating premises in plot 2 and plot 3, <coughs> The parties here too shall make a joint request before the Honorable High Court to close the proceedings under the Meghalaya PP Act as well as against the parties. Yeah, we'll after, some time. after, That's after right. the 26th. Yes. Uh, it is reported by the parties for this court that an agreement has since been, a settlement agreement has since been arrived at on 11 September 2023. A photocopy of the agreement is produced. And taken on board stop. Uh, next by MS uh, A. Paul and the senior counsel appearing for the petitioners. Raise us, we'll have to bring the same. We should have to bring the same record <coughs> we have affidavit. Same not objected to by the counsel for the respondent. This is a matter of two weeks for further orders. Obliged. This is an incomplete document actually, which has been placed before you. We'll keep it on matter. Item number seven. Please, your lordships. Please, your lordships. Unfortunately, my lord, I could not prepare. I am praying for a short adjournment, lordship. I had a bereavement at home. Lord. You know that uh, election petitions, if you ask for time, if I, you, I cost understand, is, my lord. Cost is to, no, they had cost filed to a 7 11. I have replied. They again filed a reply on top of a reply. So I just need some time to my lord, go through it. I'm Your Lordships, I am physically present here to argue the matter. Yes. And the replication was filed two days prior, Your Lordships. On the last occasion, also Which adjournment was taken. Replication to the 7 11 reply, Your Lordships. Okay. But it's on a you know, ground bereavement, so That's I think right. we cannot. Uh, In fact, I was not here also for the last four months. Yes. I've seen application of adjournment by the Council for the Petition due to the bereavement of the family. Some constriction thereof. Matters stands adjourned to give a date two weeks, but uh, whenever she is convenient, so on, so this on, so on, so on. I do number eight.
Yes, Mr. Sai. What's it for today? Uh, yes. Yeah. We'll start. Uh, no, 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 no. My Yes. Not just in the past, uh, 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 and, and there are the motion that I am making my own to the application and the beginning that I have specifically raised and I have executed my application and the response there. And I am going to do my indicating certain judgments that show whether the non compliance of the provisions of the representation of people's act, in particular uh, section 81, 82, and 83, would be fatal to an act. Uh, to an election petition, and in terms of section 56, there shall be a dismissal of the election petition in such a manner. Now, Dr. my grounds are set out in paragraph 4 of the application, which is in this case 19 and 2020. Yes. So, my question is going to have paragraph 4. There are probably four grounds on this. Para four. That is a yes. Para four of my yes. 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 That a pressure has preferred petition. Para four of my application. This is uh, an application under section eighty six of the representation of people that are ready to sell the general. Para four is without the ground taken above. I have made two of my application. One second. Objection. Yes, part of two. Two. Three. Just read, just read it, uh, Mr. Sai. Yes. yes. Without prejudice to the ground taken above, the petition is also barred in law on the following grounds. Which page are you reading? The, this, this is page number two of my application. This is item 8, Indo Star Shine versus the Yes, yes. Really? In that this is the, you're reading Miss Case number 9, correct? 19. 19. Yes. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. So which one is yes. so they have made too many files. This is on the section 86, that with 711. Yes. Filed yes. on 13623. Yes. Yes. 13623. Okay, right, right. No, but they give the wrong. Yes. What is so many? One whiskey is very little. I appreciate it. Yes. 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 That the petition is barred by law as it has been filed in violation of 81 of the Representation in People Act. Two, 
the petition is filed against you want to chapter eight eight for the future of the document. Three, the petition is also in violation of section eighty two of the RP Act. Yes. And four, it is in violation of section eighty three of the RP Act. Lordship, in addition to these four grounds, Lordship will make a note that I would also be urging the ground of limitation, which has in fact become available to me as a consequence of uh, the previous application having been filed. That's why since the application under Miss Case 19 was filed prior in time, limitation has not been specifically pleaded. But since it's a legal ground, I would be urging that before my Lordship. And I would uh, endeavor to indicate how the petition not having been presented in accordance with the rules within the limitation period would also be part of the limitation. Now, what is the first legal provision that I would like to draw your attention to? Attention is to Article 329B of the Constitution of India. Not would stand barred to interference by court in electoral matters. Yes. Notwithstanding anything in this constitution, no election to either House of Parliament or to the House or uh, either House of the legislature of the state shall be called in question except by an election petition presented to such authority and in such manner as may be provided for by or under any law made by an appropriate legislature. Lordship, I am placing emphasis on the uh, words presented to such authority and in such manner. The constitution itself provides that the election petition must be presented to a specific authority and it must be, provided, it must be so presented in a manner Yes. That may be provided. Therefore, the process and the presentation of the election petition in accordance with the provisions of the Representation of People's Act becomes a strict requirement because it is so provided under the Constitution of India. And that would be my first proposition, that under 329B itself, there is a requirement that the election can be challenged only when it is presented to such authority and in such manner as yes. may be provided for by or under any law. Now, we should note that the law made under 329 in this regard will be the provisions of the representation of people. And in that process, the first provision I would like to indicate is section 2. Section uh, Section eighty Eighty-eight. Yes. Section six. It is no, 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 no. by Act Forty Seven and Six. So and so and so. Eighty-eight. Uh, Eighty-eight. Okay. Yes. Capital. Yes. I could. Yes. Such jurisdiction. Shall be exercised ordinarily by a single judge of the high court, and the chief justice shall from time to time assign one or more judges of the high court. Provided where the high court consists of only one judge, he shall try all election petitions presented to that court. The high court in its decision may, in the interest of justice or convenience, try an election only of party at a place other than the place of the seat of the high court. Lordship, why? Pointing out section 88 to begin with, 
is that the high court while trying an expedition functions as a tribunal which is vested with the powers to try the election petition. It is not exercising powers under Article 26 or any other extraordinary great powers that are otherwise vested with the law. Yes. But it is discharging a statutory function under the provision of Section 80 of the Representation of People Act. Now, the first uh, provision which is relevant for my application under section uh, under the uh, section 81. There are three broad arguments also that I will be placing before you all. First is that the presentation of this petition before this tribunal, before this honorable court, yes. is defective, it is not in compliance with the statutory requirements. And therefore, on that ground, on the ground of wrongful presentation, okay. the petition is What, the, what is the defect? That's number one. Yeah. Yes. The second uh, broad heading would be that the form of the election petition is also non compliant with the mandatory statutory requirements. So that was a defective. So the first is the reason, the second is form, and the third is that it is in keeping with the statutory bars under the representation of people. These will be the three broad themes that I will flag. Third one is what? Sorry, come again. Third is the statutory bar under the representation of people. Okay. Because otherwise, I demonstrate that the petition is without all that. Okay. Right, so these are broad things. No, Presentation no. of the petition is effective, the form election petition is effective, and the statutory bar under the RP Act. Okay. Right. No, defective would, uh, defective would uh, in fact, uh, I would like to rephrase it by saying that it is fatal. It is contrary to the statutory requirement. The uh, therefore, the fatal. That, that's your submission, yes. Yes. Yes, that would be my submission. Right. Now, to that end, we will have section 81. Which yes. stipulates the presentation of petitions. Yes. An election petition calling into question any election may be presented on one or more grounds <coughs> specified in subsection 1 of section 100 and section 101 to the High Court by any candidate at such election or any elector within 45 days from but not earlier than the date of election of the return candidate or if there are more than one return candidate at the election and the dates of the election are different, the later of two days of these two days. 81 one therefore also places two substantive requirements. One, that the grounds under an election petition must be those which are enumerated under section 100 and 101. Yes. And two, that it must be presented within the limitation period so described. Yes. Which is in this case 45 days. Yes. Section 81 3. Every election petition shall be accompanied by as many copies thereof as there are respondents mentioned in this petition. And every such copy shall be attested by the petitioner under his own signatures to be a true copy of the petition. Now, watch it. The manner and mode of presentation of the election petition is specified under Section 81 3. Yes. And the word used of is of amplitude, the word is used is presentation of the election petition. Why I am emphasizing on that word is because there are rules of the High Court which are in vogue, which specifically provide for the manner in which these election petitions are required to be presented before the High Court. So therefore, first is the fact that the section itself places a requirement that it must be presented in this form. And the second would be the object that there are rules which stipulate the manner in which it has to be done. In this regard, the object, I would like to point out that it is common ground between the parties that so far as the conduct of election petitions is concerned, 
the rule of the law actually high court yeah. are holding for so far as the court uh, high court of Meghalaya is also concerned there is no dispute on this point yes so yes. should my interest be turn to page 24 of my application because this is closely connected with the argument of section 81 Yes. 24 is the relevant portion of the high court, high court rules. Lord Chief will turn to page 26. Yes. This is chapter 8A of the Lord High Court rules. <coughs> now, Lord Chief will find. That the chapter concerns special provisions related to procedure in election petitions under the Representation of the People's Act 1951 as amended by Act of So and So. Now, notice the term special provision itself is of uh, significance in the matter because the special provision will prevail over the general provisions. Yes. And if something is specified to be done in a specific way, then the logic moves that it is well settled that it has to be done in that way or not at all. Yes. Now, uh, because this entirety of the rules are having to be because these rules are fundamental to my objection and to my logic. So I will just slowly read the rules. Logic comments. An election petition under the section 80A of the Representation of the People Act may be presented. Duly verify in the form prescribed under the section 82 and 83 of the set act before the notice mark is the stamp report of this sort with a court fee of rupees 6 affixed thereon within 45 days from the date of election of the return candidate. Or if there are more than one candidate at the election and the dates of election of are different, the lack of two, those two days. Now, logically, find that there are two aspects of the matter. One, now the rules is prescribing that to whom must the presentation of the expectation be made. It must be presented to the stand reporter of the court. Yes. That is number one. Number two is that it is also prescribing the form. It is saying that it must be in the form, uh, form prescribed under section 82 and 83. And an additional requirement, which is of the stamp of rupee 6, affixed thereon, is being uh, uh, placed there. That requirement is also being introduced. The further yes. requirement of this is that this must be done within 45 days from the date of election of the return candidate. Now, why I read up uh, Article 329B is because the article itself says that in such manner as may be prescribed and to such authority as may be prescribed. So, okay. the, it is these rules. So, your first contention will be that it was never presented for stamp reporter. Is that correct? Yes, Lord okay. That is my first condition. It was okay. never presented to the stamp reporter. Okay. And my second condition, of course, is as regards the form. So the first fundamental condition is that it is not been presented to the authority which alone has the jurisdiction to accept such election petitions. You see, this is this is this is fatal. So according to you. This is fatal uh, because 329B yes. said that we have strict requirement and presentation as per whatever rules are prescribed. And so the, the prescription is that as per the Gauti Aigo rules, therefore, stamp report was not, not being done, so it fails there only. Okay, next. It fails there only. Yes. Because uh, uh, there are judgments also which say that the presentation must not only be in person, but it must also be made to the person who is designated under the rule. Right, right. So it cannot be filed in the registry or it cannot be filed right. by a clerk. It has to necessarily be to the stand reporter of the concerned By the election petition itself. Yes. yes. And also there is a purpose behind it. That also has to be discussed in the judgment. 
it okay. is because the and the electricity effect is an intent to offset an entire democratic process of election Okay. The entire purpose behind an election petition is that if it succeeds, then an election, which is uh, the most fundamental democratic process, that would be upset. Now, the reason why a prescribed authority is designated under the rules is so that at the first instance, an evaluation can be made that the person is physically coming, making the presentation before that person. And that the presentation is not vexatious or frivolous. These are the exact terms of a judgment which I will uh, uh, place before this honourable court. So therefore, this is not just a requirement of a rule. It is not an administrative convenience. It has meaning and purpose, and that has been so interpreted by the honourable court in several times. Now, further logic. Every such petition shall be accompanied by as many copies thereof as there are respondents mentioned in the petition, together with one extra copy. All copies being fully attested by the petitioner under his own signature to be a true copy of the petition, and as many envelopes as there are respondents sharing the required requisite postage stamp to enable service to be effected by registered post with acknowledgement due. Logic has taken a view that this is a curable defect, so therefore I am not. Uh, uh, Laboring on this requirement, but admittedly, this requirement also will take note was not met in the present facts till an application was filed, and that application stands allowed by an order of 11th of August. So, one of my documents was that 11 which was filed prior in time is also this. Now, logic will come uh, uh, to point D, which is there at page 26. A challan showing the deposit of two rupees two thousand into the state bank of India, so and so branch in favour of the register of the court as security for the cost of the petition. Now, lots of security for the cost of the petition is also something that is flowing from the representation of people act altogether. Section one hundred and eighteen of the representation of people act. Yes. Section one hundred and seventy, chapter five. Lots of return to the section itself. Chapter Five of the Representation of People Act, Section One One Seven. Yes. There is a substantive chapter that deals with costs and security for costs. Yes. One One Seven, security for costs. At the time of presenting an election petition, the petitioner shall deposit in the High Court, in accordance with the rules of the High Court, a sum of so and so as security for the cost of the petition. During the course of the trial of an election petition, the High Court may at any time call upon the petitioner to give such further security for costs as admitted. Now, what is this substantive provision under the Representation of People's Act is? Further narrowed down and further specified under the rules, which I have indicated, which is at point B. One of my conditions is also that this requirement is not to be fulfilled in the facts of the present. In which manner? No deposit was made. These deposits are not. These deposits are not. Okay. Okay. Logic will thereafter see note 2, which is at the bottom of the page. Yes. Now, this is a, I'll first read it out and then make my solution. Note 2. Any petition which is presented out of time and without any of the above mentioned requisites do be satisfied. Shall forthwith be returned by the stamp reporter for the file. Yes. This is the precise reason why I say that presentation to the stamp reporter is necessary because it will entail an examination of whether it is frivolous, vexatious, meeting the requirements of the Act and rules or not. And if it is not, then it shall be returned. So, if it is not presented to the stamp reporter, then the possibility of being returned is altogether completely avoided. And that could not have been done under the rules. 
point number two is also relevant. As soon as possible, the petition of petitions which is or are in time and in form shall be laid before the judge or judges signed by the Honorable Chief Justice from time to time for the prior of election petitions under the subsection 2 of section 80A of the representation of People's Act 1951 for registration and other orders so that the petitions can be tried as expeditiously as possible in the manner laid down under the new 86 side of the uh, abortion act. Now, lawyers will find that again the emphasis is on two fundamental facts. First, as soon as possible, the petition which is or are in time, so that is the first requirement, and in form shall be laid before the judge. So, a petition which is not in time or not in form for both cannot be laid before the judge in this case of ownership for the trial of the election. So it has to be both in time and it has to be in form. In this case, as the ownership has determined finding in the order of 11 August 2023, that admittedly it was not meeting the requirements of section 81 in that the necessary copies, the true copies of the uh, uh, of the petition were not in fact provided for. Lordship by the judicial order has had to permit that being done. So that judicial order in my respectful submission is an acknowledgement of the fact. Yes, continue. It is an acknowledgement of the fact. In fact, the application by the election petitioner yes. is itself an acknowledgement of the fact that it was not in form. Okay. And had it been You mean that application before, itself is, is will substantiate the fact that it was not in form? It is an admission. It yes. is an admission. In my respectful submission, it's an admission on affidavit that a substantive requirement of the representation of people's act and the quality I go to was not met. Yes. But for the judicial order passed on 11th August, permitting the uh, election Yes. So therefore, had it been presented before the stamp reporter, the stamp reporter would be duly obliged under the rules to return it and not to place the same before the honourable court on the day it was placed. Yes. And the officer knows that the time period for the election petition stops to run only when the matter is placed before the court. Yes. In this yes. case, if the petition was filed in the absence of the requisite form, yes. it would have been returned. And in my respectful submission, it is only on the 11th of August yes. that the requirements of the form have been complied with pursuant to your Lordship's order, and therefore it is barred by time. Okay. Therefore, it is also barred by time. These aspects would have been dealt with adequately by the stand report had it been presented. So you would say that the only the, the in proper form, the presentations in proper form only in 11th of August, if it's considered proper. Yes. If at all it is considered proper, then it's on 11th of August. That's number one. But fundamentally, Lordship, the presentation was never made in the eyes of law. Because the presentation was required to be made to the stamp reporter with a stamp of 6 rupees with the payment of 2000 rupees as cost for security and the stamp reporter would ascertain whether it is meeting the form requirements or not. Yes. And if the stamp reporter would ascertain that it is in form and it is in time, it would pass it on to the honourable court for yes. the court to take cognizance of the petition and not otherwise. Otherwise it would be returned. Yes. <coughs> and the presentation Lord, is the next part, part of, uh, of this is that the presentation has to be by the candidate himself. Right. It has to be in person. It cannot be through an advocate, it cannot be through a clerk, it cannot be through an authorized right. representative. There are n number of judges, Lord, I will cite some of them. Yes. To indicate that proposition is well settled. Again. Yes. Again, to be argued, yes. 
Sorry. Yes, continue. It could be argued. It could be argued also that this is a technical requirement. Yes. But judgments after judgments have held this to be a substantive requirement of the election process. Because for the fundamental reason that the consequence of the election petition being allowed is so grave. That is why the technicalities have to be followed to the T. The rules have to be followed to the NS degree. The rules have to be complied with from the yes. beginning. And at each stage, the rules have to be complied with by the election petitioner himself. No, that's correct. No, that's correct. It's hyper technical in the presentation and even how you swear affidavit. But yes, the continuance. Yes. My submission, therefore, to your logic uh, is that these are all substantive requirements. There is no okay. concept at all. There is no concept at all. This is my submission for your logic kind consideration. There is no concept of a technical requirement in the trial of election petitions at all. Each and every requirement that is set out in the rules and in the act flows from the constitution and is therefore a substantive requirement. Okay. Yes. Yes. Now your option. This is so far as the presentation of the uh, election petition is concerned. That is section 81 read with the Gohati High Court rules. Right. Now the second portion is logic. It is also my submission for a lot of time consideration that this is not the election petition is also not in keeping with section 82. Okay. For section 83. Yes. 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 And in a content of the petition, an election petition shall contain a concise statement of the union facts on which the petitioner re relies, shall set forth full particulars of any current practice that the petitioner alleges, including a full statement as to possible names of the parties alleged to have committed such current practice, and the date and place of commission of each of, the, each of such practices, shall be signed by the petitioner and verified in the manner laid down in the code of civil procedure for the verification of the Yes. Provided that where the petitioner alleges any current practice, the petition shall also be accompanied by an affidavit in the prescribed form in support of such allegation of current practice and the particulars there. Any schedule to be ensure, any schedule or ensure that the petition shall also be signed by the petitioner and verified in the same manner as the petition. You are also to know that the application filed by the petition acknowledges the fact that clauses C and 83.2, 83.1C and 83.2 were not being met by the petition. 83.1C. Shall be signed by the petitioner. Okay, it's violation with 81 C. Shall be signed by the petitioner and verified in the manner laid down in the Code of Civil Procedure 1908 for the verification of dealings. And 83 2. And 83 2. Right. Any schedule or condition of the petition shall also be signed by the petitioner and verified in the same manner as the petitioner. Yes. Yes. So there is a concession that the copies of the petition, which are not really seeking copies, each and every annexure has to be signed. That was not done. Merely photocopies were handed over, and this is a substantive requirement under the second. No, you said like annexures were not signed. Yes. Mm, okay. In the copies made over to the petition uh, to the respondent, they were not signed. Okay. Yes. Now, Dr. Uh, before I proceed further, uh, I would just like to take uh, your permission to go back to section 81. 
Because 81 really speaking is the section that any uh, uh, part of all my submissions. One presentation. So, Yes. yes. So, so you mean you mean the main thrust of argument is that on the presentation itself the whole case fails. Yes. Okay. On presentation itself it fails, and on presentation itself there is. Uh, but presentation comes with two aspects. First is the presentation itself. Yes. In what form? That aspect is not being met. And third, the timeline within which it was required and the timeline in which it has been made. So there are three parts to the presentation. There are three parts to the presentation. Now, uh, as, as you know, what you see in section is one. It is one three. Every election petition shall be accompanied by as many copies thereof as there are respondents yes. mentioned in the petition. And every such copy shall be attested by the petitioner under his own signature to be a true copy of the petition. So each and every page of the petition has to be necessarily signed by the petitioner himself. And that is why also under the rules the stamp reporter has been cast an obligation to verify whether it is in form and if it is not in form he has to return. Yes, yes. There is a requirement to not only sign it but there is also a further requirement to indicate thereon that this is a true copy of the respective original. Both of these things have not been done in the present case and the application document take note. I am not relying on my assertion, I am relying more on their own application. They have conceded in their application that they have not done this. Yes. And, uh, and so far as the personal presence of the petitioner is required, it comes from section 81 where it says that an election petition calling into question any election may be presented on one or more grounds specified in section 100 or 101 to the High Court by any candidate. So the presentation is to necessarily be by that candidate themselves and that requirement also has not been met in the present case. Now Lord will come to my application for a moment. Yes. And in the application, I will indicate what are my specific assertions which I have taken. One second, one second, sir. Uh, Mr. Sai, one second. That order 11 is referring to where we, the, where the application for query defects allowed. Was it? Are you sure it's past 11 8th? Yes, Roshan, that is uh, 11th August 2023. Just copy the I order there. The application before me. Mm -hmm. I have the order. The order is before me, Roshan. I don't look for it. Continue, yes. Yes, you. Yes, yes. Now, Lawson will for a moment come to my application page number three. Uh, yes. Para six. Now, I just want to indicate what my specific assertions are. What I have argued before my Lawson is only straight from my application. And my next submission for your life and lawsuit signed consideration would be that these stand unrebutted. Mm -hmm. They have not been responded to in specific terms in the reply. And there is a green rendition of each of these elements. Lawsuit will find para 6. That at the outset it is submitted that Article 329B of the Constitution bars interference in electoral matters except by an election petition presented to such authority and in such manner as may be provided for by or under any law. It is submitted that the Parliament has enacted the Representation of People's Act which provides for the manner and procedure for presenting election petitions to the concerned authority. Section 80 of the RT Act 
specifically provides that no election petition shall be called into question no election shall be called into question except by an election petition presented in accordance with provisions of this act it is submitted that in the present matter the instant election petition is instituted in contravention of the provisions of the representation of people act and is accordingly liable to be dismissed this is my specific assertion there is no denial that it is right it is submitted that section 86 of the representations of people act provides that the high court shall dismiss an election petition which does not comply with the provisions of section 81 or 82 or section 117 of the act i have indicated to my lordship that section 81 is not complied with yes section 82 is not complied with i have also indicated that the necessary security deposits have not been paid before the salary portal has not been paid at all therefore one one seven is not complied with so all three sections 81 82 and 117 stand contrary and therefore in terms of section 86 the high yes. court shall dismiss the petition no para ir lo que va a tener que ser así of no compliance with the bahati and the rules and also this is important uh, this paragraph is important because i have taken a specific plea that the petitioner is not personally present and there is no denial to this lot of people in the last four lines of this yes. paragraph the election petition has not been presented by the petitioner personally before this honorable court in accordance with section 811 of the rp act and rule 1 chapter 8a of the bahati act for rules so there is an assertion that there is no personal presentation at all so the aspect of the stamp reporter etc will come only later after first requirement is that you must personally there to present the petition Then it must be to the stamp reporter, and the uh, as I have indicated, the flow chart will go. The stamp re- reporter will verify it whether it has six to be stamped, whether it is in court form, whether it is in forty five days. Yes. And the stamp reporter also could give the endorsement that there is personal presence. There is no such endorsement. Yes. And there is an admission because this is specific government, not denied. So there is an admission. Now, uh, over the page also, uh, the next slide, uh, next slide, the second last slide. The note appended to the rules clearly says that the chapters and appendix. Are under preparation, and to that extent, the Guwahati High Court rules will continue to be followed till the next part is modified. A relevant uh, part of the rules is uh, this is not a dispute. Lot of time, I need not detail a lot of on the aspect of uh, applicability of the rules. They have admitted it at every step. They have admitted it. They have written submissions. They have uh, made over to me today. They have admitted it in their in their response to the second paragraph. Next point. Paragraph ten. Paragraph ten. Because I have just indicated the readings uh, one by one, so that I can clear up and show that they are completely true. Paragraph ten. That it is submitted that Chapter Eight A of the Guwahati High Court Rules provides for such provisions relating to procedure in election petitions under the Act. Rule One, Chapter Eight A of the Guwahati High Court Rules provides that a duly verified election petition must be presented in presentation before the stamp report of the Honorable High Court to the Court of Appeal to be fixed on the election petition within 45 days from the date of the election of the desired candidate. The relevant portion of Rule One is what is under. Now, eleven. That it is submitted to the Learning Registrar General of this Honorable Court by an order dated 30th March 2022, operated with effect from 1st April 2022, has assigned Assistant Registrar three 
which the duties of stamp reporting in the judicial section, the relevant part of the order is brought to the panel, and that order is next. Yes. So this aspect is also not denied, and there is no assertion in the petition that the petition was personally presented before the assistant registrar, he who has been designated as the stamp reporter of this court. And even otherwise, the assertion would not be relevant for the reason that there would already be an endorsement. There is no such endorsement in there. By name, by presence, there is no such endorsement. And in the endorsement, as your lordship knows, the name would be mentioned. The date would be mentioned. Yes. These aspects are missing critically from the position which indicate yes. and are sufficient evidence for this honourable court to take note of that this requirement has not been met. Para 12, again, Lord Chip, I have made the uh, assertion that the election petition has not been personally presented for the standard voter and there is no payment of court fee of INR 6 affixed on the election petition. Yes. So your whole the, the, your whole thrust is only that the presentation was effective and so it's fatal to the election petition. Yes. And which judgment are you relying upon? Yes. And I I would submit that that is sufficient and that I will indicate from the judgment. So no, your seven eleven the seven eleven application is just is confined to this. Right. The relevant application is confined to this. Okay. And of course, now Lordship, as a consequence of uh, their application, the argument of limitation is also there in addition to my uh, other points. Right. So, other than the presentation form, a limitation also becomes a limitation is a fundamental argument. Okay. And section section eighty six is a secondary part. Yes. Because section eighty six says shall is. Yes. If Lord Chief will just uh, uh, have section 86 for a moment. Yes. 86.1. Prior of election petition. The High Court shall dismiss an election petition which does not comply with the provisions of section 81 or 82 or section 117. I have demonstrated for your Lordship's kind consideration that 81, 82 and 117, all three of them are not complied with in this case. Okay. So the very purpose of the statutory stipulation under section 86.1 would be lost if the petition is allowed to be continued in this manner. Now, Lordship, first aspect, uh, uh, the judgment uh, uh, that I would like to place reliance upon. Yes. That NX is a part of my application at NX A4. Now only one thing, uh, Mr. Sai. What will the impact of yes. the eleven eight order have on these on this on this discourse that you're having today with regard to these technical no, aspects? No, 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 now are you trying to no, trying to say that uh, the very fact that they file that uh, for correction, you know it sort of uh, imp you know they have been implicated or whatever they've been uh, what do you call it? Lord Sir, I learned three in case of race, this particular issue because this is going to be also review of Lord Sir's argument. That is why... No, that's why, no, one second. That's why, that's why this court is asking this question. This, this question whether, whether we can revisit this... Listen, listen. Yeah. Whether revisiting this, you know, like these issues, because uh, by the application filed by the election petitioner seeking corrections of the furnishing of copies and so forth. Now, that means that goes to... The, 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 please. That goes to the uh, you know factor of presentation of election petition. So whether these arguments have been raised today, we can you know uh, what do you call it revisit and or leave yes, that aside or, or leave or, or, or listen or leave that aside and go on to the you know subsequent like submission is made regard to limitation and whether presentation will be will be counted on the day after 11 8 2023. That is what. 
Yeah. yeah. First, yeah. Is this, is this, this is my first, my three questions. The question is that there is no redistribution of any of the aspects covered under the order of eleven. Okay, so we have satisfied the score there only, so that we can, you know, we can have to appreciate it afresh. There is no revisitation. The okay. word stamp reporter, the word presentation, the word uh, Guwahati High Court rules, these are not at all under consideration in the 11th order. The only issue that is under consideration is whether they can now furnish two copies of the original to uh, the other. Okay. That's the only fact. That is the only defect which is the subject matter of consideration in the 11th order. There is no question of the issue of whether it is the With my knowledge, you will permit me my knowledge, you will Yes. 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 So the judgment is also that I have been the judgment is also that I have been relied on in that order. Now you just for a moment straight away come to that order. Yes. I just clarify it straight away. I have already asked just in the basic panel, in my in my company panel. Just in the basic panel, just in the basic panel, just in the basic panel, just in the basic panel. In my company panel. Yes, 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 no, yes. Okay, no, Mr. Sai, you refer to the judge, right? Yes. First paragraph of the order, Dr. Pujit, after the first paragraph, that will clarify the issue all together. Yes. The instant miscellaneous application has been filed by the election petitioner under 141 of the CPC and section 81.3 and 87.1 of the Representation of People's Act for granting leave to allow the applicant election petitioner to file a tested copy of election petition to the respondent. This is the short issue that is there for yes. this is the only prayer. Where is the prayer that they there? Uh, fatality is not personally presenting it before the stamp reporter of this court under the higher mandated under the high court rules should be controlled. There is no prayer. Not to be read out further. As it should be read out further. Yes. 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 We are all yes. virtual mode to be difficult to Yes. Yes. So, paragraph 1, uh, last three lines. Yes. As such, by way of the instant application, leave of this court has been sought to allow the production of a district copy of the election petition duly signed by the election petitioner to the respondents. Yes. This is the only issue before the court. Neither yes. limitation is an issue. Neither stamp reporter is an issue, neither section 86 is an issue. Under section 86, the fact that this court shall be specific is not an issue. Under 329B, the fact that the election petition has to be presented in the manner and to the authority stipulated in the rules, that is not an issue. So the 11th order has only enabled him to give the copies. And I am saying not standing giving of the copies. If the fact that the rules were not met, there was no personal presentation, it wasn't before the stamp reporter, it wasn't scrutinized by the stamp reporter. Yes. That is fatal because section 86 mandates there is no other alternative other than dismissal of, a, uh, of an application which doesn't meet the rules. Eighty-six logic by read again. The High Court shall dismiss an election petition. It is like Section 3 of the Limitation Act. Section 3 of the Limitation Act says that the court shall dismiss a pet petition which is filed be beyond the period prescribed of period pres prescribed period of limitation. There is yes. no jurisdiction to entertain. So therefore, these are aspects which under the 11 8 order there can be no shelter at all. I am not reacting a single uh, uh, point of the 11 8 order. I haven't uh, spoken about uh, non furnishing of copies at all. In my entirety of my submission, my submission is that what was to be done between the petitioner and the court, not what was to be done between the petitioner and the respondent. Yes. See, but one thing, uh, para 6 of the judgment rated 11 8. With regard to limitation point, 
it seems that it's been uh, it has been considered you see para 6 and 7 the order date 11 8 uh, 2023 yes lordship i see i see that and as i read it uh, lordship the court has only held that the application filed beyond the 45 day period could have been entertained yes that application seeking uh, the clarification of the uh, per seeking permission to give the copies. okay that is the only aspect that the court has considered. The court has not considered that the petition would not be uh, and by and the seven and seven. Yes, this uh, lordship has noted that paragraph seven in paragraph seven that my seven eleven is pending consideration, and since yes. it's pending consideration, lordship has permitted them to cure the defect of not filing the copies. Nothing further. 7-11 has been kept alive. Yes. 7-11 in any case is on entirely different ground. Yes, yes, correct. It goes through so with copies. The matter in issue, the matter in issue, the number yes. of facts which are educated in that application are entirely different. They say we have not given the copies, we were mandated by 81-3 to give the copies. Please permit us to give the copies. Okay. The court said that yes, the request is given time and to give the copy since it's a curable defect. So, 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 so your submission is that that will have no bearing at all since it's restricted only to the supply of copies, which is considered like you know the, that is the only restricted the order is, is confined to that. And with the other and submissions that you have, the other objections that you've raised, you've raised 7 11 is totally divorced of you know that particular order. In regard to presentation, oh, it goes. It goes to the uh, root of. I mean, into the root of the presentation of the election like, project itself. Yes, they, yes, that's fair enough. And yes. That, yes. Para nine of your lordship's order records this fact. Para nine says, from the facts they heard as they pertain on that day and as given in the order dated eleven seven quoted above, the preliminary objection was yet to be taken up for consideration or argument. And as such, the above quoted judgment will apply in the instant case, in as much as leave has been sought to furnish the attested copies of miscellaneous case 19 will be taken up. Paramount clearly covers the yes. entire account of what is being considered in 11. So, all that I have argued today before my lordship was never argued, never raised, never contested between the parties. This is for the first time being raised before my lordship. And I have shown uh, that under 86, these are statutory parts. Now, Lord Shri, will come back to my application? Yes. And lecture yes. 8 4. Yes. And lecture? 8 4. Uh, this is at page 38. Sri Rama ready? Yes, G V G Ram. Now this is this judgment project is uh, very important insofar as the fact that it re-emphasizes that there is strict construction and strict strict interpretation of the election uh, representation of people's act. Lord you will see the facts of paragraph two. Yes. The election of constituency number so and so Karnataka was held in general elections conducted in the state in 2008. Appellant was the candidate of the CPM party. Appellant 2 was the election agent. Respondent number 1 is the returning of the parliamentary legislative uh, assembly constituency. Respondent number 2 is the con uh, Congress party. Respondent number 3 is the observer. According to the appellant, election was held on 10 5 2008. Counting took place on 25 5 2008. Initially, the media officer appointed by the election commission announced appellant one as a successful candidate and declared him elected. When the election agents and counting agents of the appellant, appellant one had left the place of counting, an application for recounting was submitted by the second respondent, and thereafter the second respondent was declared elected. The appellant filed an election petition under section 81 of the Act on various grounds pointing out large-scale irregularities and illegalities committed by the respondent authorities in the voting and the illegalities of allowing the recounting after announcing the declaration of appellant 1 as elected. 
on 6 7 2008 what is this is important the first appellant through his advocate shri shiva reddy presented the election petition before the registrar judiciary high court of karnataka the registry of the high court put up an office objection that as the appellant was not present at the time of filing of the election petition the presentation of the papers was not in accordance with section 81 of the act and as such there was no proper filing of the election petition based on the office objection the matter was placed before the learned single judge of the high court dealing with the election petition and the arguments were heard by the new order the learned single judge based on the recorded statement of the registrar judicial dated 7/7/2008 that the petitioners were not present while they were presenting this petition and finding that it was not a proper presentation in terms of 81 dismissed the election petition agreed by the said order the appellants have filed this appeal before this court now notice in the present case i will demonstrate that there is an admission on this aspect as well complete admission on this there is a complete admission, no material at all has been brought on record to show no endorsement of the plan reporter, no assertion with any specificity that on this date at this time I came and I made the uh, presentation of the election petition. When that objection was taken in my 7 it was it was the duty of the uh, election petitioner to respond to it with specificity. But that has not been done. So therefore, in my respectful view, no requirement of evidence is required on this point. It is admitted, completely admitted. Uh, now, what should we come uh, to paragraph 14? This is important because... Yes. The contentions, Lord Shippa, I am skipping, but the contentions broadly so far as we are concerned are the same, that it is required to be strictly construed. Page 40. 14. A close look at section 81 reveals that the two remaining subsections after the amendment introduced by the Act 47 of 96, uh, 1966, that is 1 and 3, deal with two distinct but interrelated issues. Subsection 1 deals with the necessary requirements of any petition challenging an election. And subsection 3 deals with additional requirements as to the petition presented. Subsection 1 has five components. The qualification of the petitioner, that is, he, she must either be a candidate at such election or an elector. The petition must be presented in inverted commas, as I said, by the petitioner. The petition must be based on one or more of the grounds specified in section 100 and 101. It must be presented in the High Court and it must be presented within 45 days from but not earlier than the date of election of the return candidate or if there are more than one return candidate at the election and dates of the election of the, the later of Therefore, all these five requirements are extremely specific and clear. This inference is further strengthened by section 86.1, which provides that the High Court shall dismiss an election petition which does not comply with the provisions of 81. This court, on previous occasions, had the chance to interpret section 81.1. It must be noted that the Representation of People's Act is a special statute and a self-contained regime. In K. Vekiteshwara Rao, versus so and so. A question arose whether 45 days period under 81.1 could be condoned though the app, through the application of the Limitation Act. After examining the relevant provisions of this Act, this court held the Limitation Act cannot apply to proceedings like election petition in as much as the Representation of People's Act is a complete and self-contained court which does not admit of the introduction of the principles of the provisions of law contained in the Indian Limitation Act. This has been reiterated in Hukum Dev Narayan versus Lalit Narayan Mishra, wherein this court has again read the requirements of 81 strictly while stating that the act is a self-contained special statute. Lord Shiva, just pause here. Yes. Now, in the facts of the case, Lord Shiva has noted 81.3 yes. which casts a requirement for Providing same number of copies to be attested was not met. 
that is that has been noticed by the court and that has been admitted by the election petition. Eighty one three was not being met. Uh, for a moment, I am not on the other requirements of stamp reporter, etc. I am on their edge. Eighty one three not met. On eleventh of July, an application is made for the first time, <coughs> saying that permit us to cure this defect of eighty one three. Right. The honourable court by an order of eleventh August permits it to be cured. It is for the first time, therefore, on eleventh August that the because the requirement of eighty one three cannot be dispensed with. The requirement of eighty one three cannot be dispensed with. Paragraphs fourteen and fifteen are quite clear. They have to give the copies. It has to be attested in the manner of eighty one three. It is only a question of whether it could have been cured or not. That is done on eleventh. Uh, 2023. As on that day, is for the first time that the election petition before your office is compliant with the requirements of 813, subject to the caveat. Of course, I am talking. Uh, I am only arguing strictly on 813. According to me, it has never been compliant because it was never presented personally. Okay, we understood the arguments, uh, Mr. Sai. Yes. Like, so you come to the limitation yes. aspect now. Again. Yes. Now, uh, uh, yes. But uh, now 16. While interpreting a special statute, which is a self-contained code, the court must consider the intention of the legislature. The reason for this fidelity towards the legislative intent is that the statute has been enacted with a specific purpose, which must be measured from the wording of the statute strictly construed. The preamble of the Representation of People's Act makes it clear that the conduct of election of the Houses of Parliament or the Legislature of each state, the qualification and disqualification for membership of those houses, the corrupt practice and other offences in connection with the allegations, uh, allegations, the Act was enacted by the Parliament. In spite of existence of adequate provisions under CPC relating relating to the institution of the suit, the present Act contains elaborate provisions as to disputes regarding election. It not only prescribes lots of mark these lines. It not only prescribes how election petitions are to be presented, but it also. What's the matter about? Or signing dues, your lordship? My lord, there's payment of the contractual dues, my lord, by the petitioner. What's the difficulty? Your lordship, uh, initially what happened was that the courts was not available with the department, so now. What's the amount? Three crores. Yeah. Huh? Three crores. The petition is claiming three crores, my lord. Three Appro crores, four lakhs. Approximately. To payable by whom? By the national highway. M O R T H. We'll give you just two weeks for the time. That's it. <coughs> Has the state filed the affidavit? My lord, I've already filed the affidavit, and we have said that we are, we are not the issuing authority, my lord. Is the other dues admitted? Right. My lord, the, in fact, my lord, what happened here is that whatever bills, my lord, that is, uh, the ministry releases to the petitioner in their private account. So no acknowledgement received or information. No, no, is, is the dues admitted or not? The, the outstanding dues is my admitted lord, by them. To, that they are to dispute that or to admit. Yes, so MSS we are in the position to say that. Submits so uh, praise that he will for the time to file affidavit. Noted that that the matter has uh, that the response number four has been allowed adequate, more than adequate. Time to file affidavit, which still did, however, is not on board. Stop. Uh, however, uh, as the affidavit is absolutely necessary in the matter, further two weeks time is granted. Eleven. Uh, <coughs> May please watch it. Also, we'll be filing the affidavit to cause for the lawsuit. Very good, uh, Mr. Yekhavanna. The council responded to submit the affidavit to file the cause for the list of two weeks for the joint if any. Yes, Sachu. Twelve. Been filed affidavit. Yeah, I am appearing on behalf of respondent number five, Lordship. Lordship, uh, wide order dated 17/8/2023. -20 Lordship, uh, opportunity for filing affidavit has been closed. Lordship, I am in the process of filing uh, the recall application. Not been filed. Not been filed. Not been filed. 
for now one two three what did they say one two three your lordship yes, they, they, they have all? already filed the affidavit yes so i'm paying if this matter can be taken after we, we are in the process the, of filing the recall application lordship four and five is whom the private respondents your lordship no, no, who are they uh, uh, kunal b coach and the matter regarding the fishery, 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 fishery your lordship. Lordship. in terms of lordship's order lordship uh, settlement was agreed and lordship now they are so you're delaying it so that you'll finish all the fish <laughs> but your lordship that order was totally misinterpreted by the respondents your lordship will whatever it is if it's close it's close we fix it for hearing yeah, but you make kindly allow us to file two weeks. Uh, the you do whatever you have to do uh, this is matter the after and behalf respondents 1 2 and 3 has been filed the same on board this matter for hearing after two weeks yes earlier much 13 May please, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, in this matter, I have been prayed two weeks' time, Your Lordship, to file rejoinder affidavit. How many times you prayed for rejoinder? Second time, Your Lordship. Second time? Yes, Your Lordship. Okay, for the two weeks' time, granted, I prayed for rejoinder affidavit. 14. My Lord, I am praying for another one week time, my Lord. The affidavit is almost ready, my Lord, for the respondent number five. Almost ready? My Lord. One big time. What about uh, number four? It's not entered appearance. You're entering number four. Who's entering no, appearance? Number six. Number six. Have you filed affidavit? No, we're a performer. You're a performer. What about number one, two, three? One, two, and three. You don't win it, but you can't do it. Yes, uh, MS Adapta prays for God further. One week's time. Well. To file affidavit just thereafter and so on. Right. Yes, MS Bharathaji. Yes, Your Lordship, I file. You file? Yes, sir. Uh, Your Lordship, in this matter, I have paid two weeks' time, Your Lordship, to file a rejoinder affidavit. Yes, MS and Raji pays for a lot two weeks' time to file a rejoinder to the affidavit filed by state respondents. Imagine. This is after and so on. 16. 16, uh, we still have to get an instruction. I must say, even submit that the section is yet to be received. The phase was allowed two weeks for a time for instructions to affidavit. Yes. 17. Yes, please, Your Lordship. We'll be filing our affidavit during the course of the day, Your Lordship. Yes? We'll be filing our affidavit today, Your Lordship. You're a newly impeded? Yes, Your Lordship. We're for university. Okay, a substitute. Yes, MS Hedsalam Sambit Sadi. I will be filing the course of the day after two weeks for a joint event. Highly of that. 18. Please, Your Lordship. Yes. I'm entering appearance on behalf of respond number four. Very good. May I please tell you some more time to file the rejoinder affidavit, Lord Chief. To whom? To state, Lord Chief. Uh, you you file your affidavit? Yes, this is your Lord Chief. In fact, the matter has become infructuous because what happened, the uh, work has already <coughs> been completed, your Lord Chief. That fellow who said the work was cancelled due to inadvertence and said given to someone else. Yes, some more time, Lord Chief. Yes. That is, that is the allegation of it. If Lordship can we have our uh, the oh, affidavit filed by us? No, no, we have to hear this matter. How was it allotted and cancelled? Yes, Mr. A.G. Moment, then it appears we have one of four today. You want to file anything? No. Yes, and he prays for the allowed two weeks time for affidavit. Just thereafter. So, we'll finish up next week. You file the affidavit, Lord. How are you, Lord? 19. Please, Your Lordship. Yes, affidavit. Affidavit is ready, Your Lordship. We'll file in the course of the day. Ms. S. Allowed submits that affidavit and be our respondent, respondent Nehu will be filed in the course of the day. This is two weeks for rejoinder. Yes. 20.
May it please my lord. Yes. And the service has been completed, my lord. Have not I mean, how many pilot respondents are there? My lord, there are. The, the all official respondents, he's appearing for all of them. My lord. Yes. I'm praying for two weeks' time. How much? Two weeks' time. Uh, MS SLM pays for about two weeks' time to file. After this, this thereafter is. And so on. So. Highly obliged. 21. Yes. Yes. Actually, the CD doesn't mean anything. It's just uh, just not. We don't take for any like evidentiary value or anything. It's just that there are some submissions were made, but you know, just uh, anyway. We'll not, next week. Whether the commission can function with a single non-fiction No, we'll take that up. Yes. That has become a kind of exercise because the Only one disturbing thing, Mr. Paul. Only one thing disturbing thing, Mr. Paul, is that at the time when we were viewing that uh, video, I mean that uh, in you know in the presence of parties, is that that uh, consultant is it seems that he's running the show. You see, he's he's like you know. <laughs> <laughs> he says retired. No, and in that particular hearing, he was, he was, you know, he was like, you know, I, I don't think it is proper in that, you know, view the matter for him to take part in, in such a manner. Yes. 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 One Mr. One Mr. Suni, one Mr. Suni from from MP. Lord Chubhati, I'll, be, I'll yes. be entering appearance on behalf of Respondent Number One, my lord. That is the Commission. Number One. Number One. Yes, uh, Mr. Uh, S. Jindal has uh, today has entered appearance on behalf of Respondent Number One. Uh, parties pray for uh, some accommodation. This is a matter of the one week. Lord Chubhati, I was also praying if I could be supplied a copy of the petition I have. I don't have a single piece of paper. Then how have you entered appearance if not received notice? Lord Chippa, uh, we've been informed that we've been made a party. So on the strength of that information, we, we've not received notice. That is true because notice, I believe, has not yet been issued. Is that correct? No, no. But since there seems a regular authority, why do you appear? Because our judicial authority is Yes, but as quasi judicial authority, why you want to appear? Uh, uh, for two reasons, my lord. Uh, one is we've been made a party. Secondly, my lord, it is on the strength of our presence that they have entered the writ court because in our absence, there is no writ jurisdiction against a private entity. So we are a necessary Whatever party. it is, yes, I think that is against your order. That's lord why written uh, the allegations, There's nothing else. Lord Chip, the allegations, if I understand correctly, without going through the writ, is that uh, we, we did not afford opportunity of hearing, etc. to them. Not only that, contemptuous acts. On behalf of the Religious Commission, yes. So, th therefore, therefore, my malified contempt. Yes. So, therefore, my lord, uh, presence is required, my lord. Then, like, uh, stop uh, MS uh, S. Uh, S. Lalu. S. Lalu. Of course, S. Lalu shall supply a copy of the petition to the to Mr. S. Jindal, Council for Respondent Number One. Yes. Thirty-one. Publish. Thirty-one. Yes. Please, Lord Shiva, I'm praying for two weeks' time, Lord Shiva, to so file. Today, for filing affidavits only. Yes, yes uh, MS. Uh, what about the other respondents? Ma'am, I'm praying for respondent number two. Are you filing affidavit? Okay. Ma'am, I'm sending the petition for you. Are you filing affidavit or not? Yes or no? Ms. S. Salam prays for the Lord two weeks. Two weeks. to file activities. What about uh, one? Yes. No representation.
Dr. N. Mohsika Sabit Zalo, I feel for coming in Bihar's phone number one. As the as uh, response number, one. you two and three. Number one. Do you know Nehu is? Nehu, Nehu is what? Two is Mara Amu is for response two. As respondents number three and four are the main respondents. Yes. This accordingly. One, two, one, two. Yes. Thirty-two. Your Lordship, I'm praying for a time on behalf of respondents 1, 2, and 3. Four return and serve. Yes, Your Lordship, you we'll have to that? take fresh steps again, Your Lordship. Yes, Office Note indicates that, uh, Office Note dated 11 9 2023 indicates that the notice on respondent for return and serve stop. MSC B. Samyan, Council Petitioner, undertakes to take fresh steps within three days. And then you? Pray for two weeks' time, Your Lordship. I'm going to on behalf of the respondent for the Pray for the Lord. Two weeks. Time to file activity. All right, Shalat. Thirty-three. Hello, Lord. If this matter is kindly taken at the end of the board, Why? because the Advocate General, Honour Advocate General, wants to make some submissions, Manal. This is regarding that ST case, Manal. Issuance of ST certificate. Has the people been accepted? Uh, yes, Lord Chair, for the pensionary benefits, yes, it has been, been accepted. accepted. Yes, Lord Chair. Then where is the urgency? My Lord, I have said it was atomic minimum. There are some uh, atomic sums of cases in this matter. Because we are, after the superannuation, we asked for verification of the tribal ST certificate, my Lord. Now we have not received anything from state government whether this ST certificate, because he took the benefit of the ST certificate, my Lord. And if, uh, if eventually it turns out that he is, or that certificate is not genuine, my Lord. It will have civil consequences to See, the thing is that they say that the records are missing, correct, the, the state. But then the, it is recorded last order that the shelter the reparationer for to copy the next same issued from book number 117, bank sale number so, so and so, issuance number so and so. So this is, should be produced by the state. My Lord, what we happened? Have, we, we have asked for the same, my Lord. We have received a report. My Lord, the office of the Deputy Commissioner. My Lord has stated that there was a fire, my Lord, in the year 1983, uh, 1984, my Lord, 84 or 83. So, fire, fire in the decent office of the Deputy Commissioner, my Lord. So, they are, my Lord, what they have stated is that perhaps the records have been... So, what do you mean? You mean to say that sir, a person has been issued a, a certificate, the book number is there, everything is there. The whole it, record is not there, is my Lord. Missing. Yes, my Lord, the whole record is not there. And this is what the report says, my Lord. <coughs> What the report says, and further, so my lord, way, how will the court adjudicate the matter if we do we do we don't know where yes. and you, my lord, you, you will, don't know where you're no, standing yourself. My lord, not a my lord not will kindly it. see, my lord. Even yeah. as far as the ST certificate genuineness is concerned, there is a special committee which is constituted by the government, my lord. There is already a special committee is there, my lord. Correct, but the, but the fact remains that. He has been issued as Papak 83. Yes, my lord. That's the only thing. So why should he go back before a committee if he was given a child certificate in 1983? But my lord, the and number two is that it's a complaint against him. He was lord. never made one of a complaint. Some lord, uh, some NGO was complained. Question, my lord. The question is with regard to the genu genuineness of the certificate, my lord. That is the question, my lord. Because admittedly, my lord, his father's name and mother's name. Was he given an opportunity to, to be heard by the deputy commissioner of no, the committee not, before, this, before the non-issuance of the shelter certificate? But, uh, my lord, of course, at that point of time, it will be difficult for us to, my lord, make any comments, because there is no record as such. I will file an affidavit with Mr. Trishnamuzika. I will file an affidavit with Mr. Trishnamuzika. If we see this matter, then affidavit will be necessary. Affidavit will be necessary. Will it, will it, will it, will it, will there will be a cascading repercussions also in the entire service. Yes. Yes. Will it, the last order in my humble service requires some kind of modification. Then you file an affidavit with modification. Will it, the difficulty what happened, will it? Otherwise, we will have to release his pension from this month. Okay. But Lordship, if it... I don't say release a pension. It's just say in the meantime, as patient it is superannuated on 31.8, not a standing pension is proceeding before this court. Pension papers is as entitled to be processed. That's all. 
Marad, the rules say Marad, within one month of retirement, Marad, you have to start paying the pension. Marad. Marad, only that much observation you give will do. Keep on hold the payment for the time being. Marad. Then if I an application, we can't pass orders and oral submissions. If you take this back, Marad, you file affidavit or application within one week. Marad, we Marad, have what already... submissions have to make? Lordship, they have never stated Marad, in their Marad, affidavit Marad, also, Lordship. Uh, my lord, with regard to and the you should file, you should give those papers to yes, his no, no, this is a report that we we received from the office and of the deputy the report, commissioner. These are your instructions of how you craft your affidavit. My lord, if you want to make it a case. My lord, in the earlier round, my lord will kindly take note that we have already filed our affidavit in opposition, my lord. Now Where? that effort, yes, my lord. Now in their affidavit, lordship, we have already. No, I am talking about your instructions now. Yes, lordship. Yes, present instructions, then? of course, my lord. So if if if, if uh, this honourable court grants us the permission, my lord, we can we'll give instructions. You just you can give we'll, it. We'll uh, file it by way of uh, additional affidavit, my lord, if that is so. Well, they want to make an application also. So to uh, Dr. M. Bozika, who is uh, present behalf of respondents four to six, submits that uh, submits that pursuant to the court order dated 29 8, 2023, the papers read petitioner have since been accepted for consideration for process of the pensionary benefits. So, however, he submits that as uh, he submits if the shell tribe certificate is found to be not genuine, there are service repercussions. Lordship, may I just one lord? No, one second, the service repercussions for which he seeks time to file an affidavit or a approved application for modification of the order. A one week's time allowed. Let them file. Yes, okay, Lordship. Now, Mr. Kivarsi also please on public file additional additional effort to bring on record for the materials. Yes, ma'am. Obliged, ma'am. Okay. You can file it. You'd have it in your hand, then you can re yes. reply. Yes, Lordship. Obliged, ma'am. Obliged, ma'am. Lordship. 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 Yes. Lordship. What instructions yes. you receive? Ah, uh, Lordship. Ah, uh, the executive committee by order dated thirty first August two thousand twenty three. Your Lordship, the constitu they've constituted a one-man election tribunal, Your Lordship. So they've appointed a uh, one yes, Shri J. Uh, your Lordship, we just received it through WhatsApp, Your Lordship. I just have a printout of the WhatsApp, Your Lordship. We don't have the hard copy with us just yes, yet. Ms. Sino Klaus admits that uh, uh, the one-man election tribunal has been constituted to take up the election petition <coughs> stop. She prays for once allowed to bring a copy of the order the next day to be yes, submitted to the court. Yes. Or oh, you want to close it, we, Mr. Shilla? We can close it. We can close it. Uh, well, how, however, Mr. J. Shilla, the council petitioner says that the message as received will suffice and that the petition may be closed at this stage to allow the petitioner to pursue the appropriate remedy before the tribunal. Stop. Next part, I'm the day off. When it comes to submissions of council parties, matter stands closed this and disposed of. Second call, supplementary list item number three. Yes, Mr. Paul. Let us be found out. Let us be found out what AI there is. Yes. AI in that in that particular document will be the next paper. Lordship, please believe that the Airports Authority of India. Because that is an excerpt taken from the procurement manual for procurement of goods. Well, okay. have copies of the so one one only one only one question, Mr. Paul. That, so you mean apply across the board? It'll apply to all these uh, to all these uh, yes. BSU or these uh, all central government agencies. All central government agencies. You're not supposed to have a look at it. this is an extract from AI Airports Authority Procurement Manual, my lord. We are, that, we are following a different program. That, that is exactly why I got the manual method I am pointing out. It is and what it is the same. If your lordships have the manual for procurement of goods of 2017 and 2022. It's just 32 years. Lordship, just bear with me for a second. Just to say sure. <laughs> One of the difficulties of well, of having to do it uh, virtually, virtually, and well, with these technical gadgets. Seven, seven point three point five five. Yes, my lord. Yeah. Seven point three point five. Yes, seven point three point five. Yeah. The lot of the C during evaluation and comparison of bids, the purchaser may. That's why instead of AI models, it's here purchaser. At the discretion, ask the bidder for clarifications on the bid. 
Now come back to the page the 46. Yes, we see two days. Balance. 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 Page 14 of the okay. It says two days. Balance. So That's time allowed to take a clarification. Clarification. And if there is a clarification, it has to be done within two days. So the time frame is already mentioned. Once there was a Malam's shortfall in the document, they had to issue a letter Malam's So the rejection was on which date? Was on, was on 1st of September? 1-9. 1-9. Right. right. Yes. And so before the rejection Malam's, they ought to have sought a clarification. Now, interestingly Malam's, you will also say, can you see on what grounds I have been disqualified? Yes. Well, as uh, your lordship would find that there. Uh, 47. Yes, 47. Uh, page 47, type copy is at page 48, well, <clears throat> Yes. The first says, well, as, invalid authorization has been submitted. Yes. They say invalid authorization. Now, your lordship may kindly have a look at my authorization. Your lordship will find it at page 29. Page 29. 29. 29, my lords. 29. This is the authorization, my lords, by JMV LBS Limited. Yes. And my lords, it says 87 2023, my lords, and it says the bid number is mentioned on the left hand side, your lots from Kaisen. And then it says, we message so and so of the brand JMV, hereby authorized Pragati Engineers. Having its registered office at the ground floor shop number so and so so and so New Delhi to supply and bid for our manufactured goods lightning conductor system in the JM port. We are all we also hereby undertake to provide full guarantee warranty as agreed by the bidder in the event to provide satisfactory after sales and service during such period of comprehensive warranty. This authorization so may valid till so and so for the date of from the date of issue. Now, okay. your lordships, this is my authorization. They say it is invalid, well, I, I fail to understand what was invalid in it. And probably they would be in a better position to place before your right. what was the what was the defect in this particular document. What is the next defect? Now the, the next, next defect, well, I will leave your lawships. Yes. Yes. Uh, again at page 48, lawships will see blank integrity pact submitted. What's a blank integrity pact? Never heard I of it. I think it is an X, I think it is an X. I think that it is. is? The integrity pact is here, Malus. It is an X bias. Page 41. Page 41. The Lotus will kindly see, Malus. At page 41, they have just forgotten to write the name of the enterprise. It is, however, signed and sealed by the company, by the petition. Page 41 and page 42. Okay. Yes. The where the signature is supposed to appear at page forty-two, Melons, it is duly signed and sealed. Okay, blank entry practice. Hmm. And Melons, the last they say is the uh, test certificate. Test report, yes. Yes, Melons, I'll take you launch it to the test report. Page the 10. test report you're launching to find it at page thirty. Chandu Power Malus, Associates. Your Lordship, can you see? It is, it is issued by two M Messrs. JMB LPS Limited. Yes. This is my authorized uh, OEM Malus. What I have pointed out who has given me the authorization at page 29. And Malus, it says, Dear Sir, so and so, Malus, it is in the after dinner. On the so English is there, the English is there, second line with reference is it is in bilingual is a bilingual. With reference, ah, ah, yes, yes. with reference to your request dated 17 July 2023, we are enclosing here with a report number so and so, dated so and so. Yeah. Please note that the anomalies, distributions, and the test report and those if any shall be brought to the notice of the CPRI within 45 days of the C. Also, please note that the samples, colors, whatever, whatever. Then the test report will also come to page 32. 31. Yes. 
it says hello name and address of customer message jmp lps limited who is the oem yes well if what i feel to understand is if, uh, there would have to be some clarity in this matter well if, if 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 the tender committee has at all decided to reject my tender there would have to be valid yes reasons. dr majika why no. what is the problem if they forgot to put the name on top this that is just a my lord what they do my lord they don't annex all the documents my lord basically concealing of documents my lord what is this my lord lots of kind of turns to the last page my lord yes my lord they say that they have the authorization from jmb my lord they pointed out to that my lord that is a page yes you will get it first august and that authorization certificate issued on july my lord 29 page 29 correct 87 87 yes mr paul you have this letter no no i am not aware you have given it i have given a copy to no we we, we get just got it now we we'll take instruction have it tomorrow you lost it or the after that my lord you lost it next point you lost it sir have it sir no yes we'll see yes they are next point yes my lord if lots of how how genuine is this is this letter my lord they'll have to get back to their to their distributors whoever they are my lord they have to settle that with their distributors my lord exactly they have my to get they have to get whether I, i i i don't know what document my learned friend has placed before your lordship my lord the, the second last page lordship kindly comes my lord second last page my lord yes my lord there was a window of 48 hours my lord they submitted a representation my lord clearly they have been informed my lord by this representation is something else my lord representation is after the rejection i have an opportunity of represent that that's a different issue so they have answered representation also But is it a fact? That, that is a Mr. Paul, only thing is that Malala. you see what a document was produced today by the DSGI, Dr. Malia, is that in, on first August twenty twenty three, the authorization is granted to you by this uh, principal, whoever JMV, Malala. has been cancelled. I just got it for the specific. Not only that, my lord, last the last sentence you lots of kindly reads in this letter. You are hereby advised to treat our authorization yeah, as cancelled. Cancel. This cancellation authorization. Malala. My lord, the question arises that how is how is the uh, my lord their entire basis uh, the union of no no if I may just finish the question arises my lord how is the union of India in possession of this letter assuming this has been issued by JMB oh, I'll justify that also man how was how how was the tender committee in possession of this letter I fail to understand my lord because it is a it is an internal communication between JMB and me I don't see any copies being marked to the union of India exactly but that is that, that is why I ask you to take so instruction unless, because and then there's a cross no, bidder and there's a cross bidder who has you know managed to get this thing cancelled because that is you not see not only that my lord that I I would I would say that unless the union of India somebody in the tender committee is taking extra my lord interest in uh, my tender i don't understand how some internal communication has landed up to them my lord we wrote to all the oem manufacturers my lord who have certified or authorized and this is the reply we got from them that they have already we'll do one thing my lord can you find after in two days in two days by friday on friday take on friday friday on friday you you get clarification instructions my stop in the course of uh, hearing Some certain documents have been produced by the uh, <coughs> by the Learned Senior Counsel on behalf of the respondents, whereby uh, which needs further clarification from the parties. Stop so, uh, this matter on Friday. Instructions are after which is necessary to be filed before that. But this is strange. This is very really strange. And this is if this is you know. Some some something something seems amiss. <laughs> I don't know. Absolutely. 
because it can't be that you know, it can't the be the principal will give authorization without you know doing assessment of whoever authorization being given to for a specific contract and then just uh, two days um, just before the uh, bids open is cancelled. Cancel. My lord, not only that, my lord, the third point of of certificate. Can, okay, can I can I just Mr. Paul, Mr. Complete? My lord, the third point, my lord. They they annexed a certificate, testing certificate from Decra Laboratory, my lord, which is neither in the name of Pragati Engineers nor in the name of JMB, my lord. Let them get. It is the name of a third company. Give company. them copies of those. I have given copies. Yes. Hearing. Oblige. Supplementary list, item number four. Where are authorities, Mr. Wanyang? We brought so many authorities. <coughs> Why? To show that you know the like a quorum or something like that of a general council will you know will uh, will be uh, you know a chairman will not be he'll be subservient to the to the general decision of the general council. Your lordship, in the service uh, rules itself, your lordship, in and. Uh, I have, I, have, I have pointed out my matters that related in matter yes. I have pointed out rule nine yesterday to your lordship. Okay. Under service by law, your lordship, uh, it's uh, appointing authority. May I read your lordship? It uh, says that any post carrier. Your Rakesh Kumar Sharma. Rakesh Kumar Sharma. At, at page. Your lordship, service. I didn't attach the service rules, your lordship. Is it here? Have we given a copy? One second, one second. No, that's general. This service by law. By laws or rules? By by laws, your lordship. Service by law. Be clear what you say. By laws and rules are two different things. Service rules and by laws. Yes. Number nine. We'll pass orders then. Rule nine. By, by law nine. But look, there's one authority that we've been able to come across that, that is distantly well, uh, throwing some light on the issue. Yes. Well, I'm sorry, sorry. I, I, we could not uh, place the uh, judgment to the law. I'll just give a citation. Yes. This is uh, 1989 Supplement 2 SCC. Yes. Page 364. Yes. It is the case of Asif Hamid and others versus the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Relevant paragraph will be known as paragraph 27. Okay. I, uh, if, for your lawsuit's kind of convenience, I can very quickly just read paragraph 27 and there's two lines of paragraph 27. Yes. Uh, your lawsuit will find that at page 378. Right. We may now examine the submissions. It is an admitted fact that Minister So and So never functioned as part of the convenient authority. The scrutiny and compilation of selections was done by two members, namely Dr. So and So and So and So. The three member authority was not a statutory authority, it was entrusted to the functions of executive nature. The mere fact that one member did not participate in the selection does not ipso facto render the selections illegal. Same as the case here, because as set up by the uh, Union of India, they say that on that relevant day, the chairman may not have been there. No, but with someone that said that on his behalf. Who is the decision? And, and, and you also is may kindly have a look at but one of the members chaired the meeting, my lord. And the resolution adopted was that the matter be placed before the actual chairman, my lord. But chairman only for the purposes of others acting on it. He mm. cannot have a veto power. My lord, because chairman of also can have a look at rule nine. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, by law nine. Yes, we've seen that. Well, it's by law nine and ten become very relevant. If I can very quickly just read it for your lawyers. Yes. Consumption. Each member of his representative of the governing body and the governing council shall have one vote. And if there is a be an equality of votes on any questions to be decided, the chairman shall have a casting vote. Now, here, as yeah. I pointed out yesterday, there was, there was unanimity. Once there is unanimity, assuming Manas, that the chairman did, had deferred, but that also would be one vote only. So yeah. he, he cannot override the votes of all the other members. Now, you also make any have a look at 10. In case of any difference of opinion amongst the members of the governing council on a question of sufficient importance, the opinion of the majority shall prevail. 
The chairman may, however, refer any question in, which is, in his opinion, of sufficient importance for the decision of the central government. The decision of the central government shall be binding on the society, at the governing body, and the governing council. Here, the, there is unanimity in the decision of the members. Yes. And if 11 members, the accidental omission to give required notice on board receipt of notice by any member shall not invalidate the proceedings of at that meeting. So I would take it a step further, members. Due to non-notice, somebody may not be present for a meeting. That would ipso facto not render whatever is decided in the meeting void. So in this matter, members, factually there, there is nothing. There is unanimity of opinion. Yes. After that, members, there was no reason for the matter to go back to the chairman or anything, any further action to be taken. We'll pass orders then. But only one last question. Bye. Yes. Malut, uh, that, uh, may I please your Akshay? <coughs> my God, for me she came out. Yes. <laughs> yes, my Lord, uh, in continuation, like in the same, uh, what my Mr. Paul has uh, argued, advanced the same argument. I also adopt the same thing. I, I submitted it the other day also. The chairman do not enjoy any special or extra power here. Yes. And besides that, your Lordship, if they take the stand that on the meeting, on the age uh, meeting, they have already passed. It was clearly recorded that all the members of the GC endorsed their approval. So after that, it was then placed before the chairman. That does not change the decision of the GC. Yeah. Then what happens in the next meeting, important, in the ninth meeting, your lordship, which is on 8 August 22, in the very first item number, all the members were present. Chairman was also duly represented by the chairman, where they confirmed the minutes of the 8th meeting. In the but, very first agenda item number one, but the item, but the item 14, they cancelled the recruitment. Right. That is subsequent. That is any other item. That cannot come under this year. Once but they have yeah. already confirmed in item number one, as per the regular agenda, item number one, the minutes of the eighth meeting of the GC were read, confirmed, and adopted without any observation. So minutes have already been passed and confirmed. What is come subsequently? One second, one second, one second. One second. Is your reading page 82? In yes. the ninth meeting, your Lordship, uh, it is an annex of 14, okay, start yes, yes. from page 89. Right, 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 right. Come to sub para 4A, page 85. Is that a council has already approved recruitment? So he's meeting held on so and so. Already in form approval of five GC members. So and so has already been communicated. Comments are approved. So and also sought for. All him endorse approval. Chairperson said to please approve GC for Kathy DST being chairman nectar. So anyway, so that's it. Now where is that? Where is that thing? Are any other matter? Any other matter? Yes, ninety minutes. Coming at the end, at the last page may of that meeting. So this is just as an after thought. They just brought it. They cannot bring up this issue which has already been passed, confirmed. No, no, one second. Giving of approval by the GC is already confirmed and adopted. Where is it? Uh, item 14? Uh, last page, madam. Page 98. Page 98. 98. Page 98. So, it is come under any other matter? <coughs> yes. At the time of passing the agenda of the minutes of the AHG meeting, they did not give any, there, there was no observation by the members where the chairman was also present. They never said it was not confirmed. And what is needed is, See, how about chairman GC concurs, one second, concurs the decision of sketch 3, the ST in a scrapping of four mentioned posts. We come to bylaw number, coming interesting this case. Ten minutes. Yes. What your losses would be referring would be ten. Ten. Can you give the opinion, so and so and so? Uh, only because the question. Only because there is a difference of opinion. Yes. But may I point out? Yes, please. But, but before my learned friend starts, just one thing that I just point out: what has been the argument as well as in the consequence? I think the doctrine of 
approbation and reprobation would also come into play. Because in one hand you say that you confirm it, and at the end of it, we say that something that I've already confirmed, we got to undo it. Whether that would be permissible or not. Yes. And and the and the endorsement and the endorsement which was recorded in the eighth meeting, placed it before the chairman. That is not for the purpose of getting approval of the chairman. That matter already stands closed. All the GC members have already. It is you right. need the conference. You need the approval of the GC. Yes, yes, not for me. It is just for the formality sake. It is just placed before the regular chairman. So right. just that line do not ch change the situation in any manner. Yes. Did hear him? And it is not their case that the acting chairman of eighth meeting was not authorized. He was rightly delegated the power by the uh, chairman. Chairman has the power to delegate, so he was rightly delegated the power to chair the meeting on that day. So, if that is so, then all the other decisions taken on the eighth meeting has to be nullified then. Correct. And more interestingly, your office. By the same GC meeting, even the appointment of the first one, first post was also approved. But that has not been subsequently set aside by them. That has not been cancelled. Only why we can choose these four, four posts which has been cancelled. How can by the same advertisement, if the advertisement goes, if they cancel the advertisement, all the appointments made through that advertisement, all the appointments should be nullified. Yes. Let him say what, he, what does what does Dr. Mosik have to say? Yes. My lord, yes. Uh, my first submission, my lord, is that chairman of a particular meeting is something different from the chairman of the governing council itself, my lord. But will he have veto power? As per your bylaws, my lord, even veto power is not required. What is the purport of that resolution, my lord? If I may read once again, my lord. Yeah. It was not absolutely adopted and uh, any resolution passed to that effect, my lord. It only says that place it before the secretary, my lord, who is the chairman of Nectar, my lord. For what? For consideration, so for consideration. So if he was not there, so it has been placed before him. So, my lord, it was placed before him, my lord. But, my lord, my lord the only thing I have to read once again, my lord, the page 85. It only says, my, my lord, Chairman desire to place approval of GC before Secretary DST being Chairman Nectar. Where is that? Is 85 Malu. Just above sub para 4B, the last sentence Malu. Page 85, yes. Page 85. All the GC members endorse their approval. Chairperson desire to place approval of GST, GC before Secretary DST being so, does not Chairman Nectar Malu. All you must endorse approval. My lord, this is not a final adoption of a resolution, my lord. In my humble submission, my lord. Once there is a decision with regard by the GC members that yes, all these appointments are good, it cannot, nothing, no other general counsel is there. There is no there's no reference to any serious, you know, there is no fraction of the of the votes. Now, what has happened is that just placement, you get general counsel, general counsel is a general counsel. The so chairman might be a member, but then on his own, whether he has but to, Lord, uh, can he overrule? Can he overrule a general council my Lord, decision? My Lord, uh, adopting a resolution mm. is one thing in my humble submission, my Lord. Maybe there was a concurrence at that point of time, my Lord. But in the next meeting, Lord Lord, Lord has seen that again the same members, my Lord, when the secretary is there, the same members say that to re-advertise the post, my Lord. In uh, any other matters? In the same matters, my Lord. So in, 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 yes, any other my matter. Lord. in any other matters, uh, uh, is in item number 14, my Lord. Let him complete. The thing is that now, even you come to how meetings run. Now, if you're so important, won't it be fixed an agenda? Like, you know, won't it be fixed an agenda? Not any other matter. It's just that, not that the ego of a person, chairman, has been ruffled because some people dare to decide such important matter around being present and so I overrule it anyhow. It's, it's, it, it reflects like that. But there is a concurrence by all the members of GC, my lord, in this in the next meeting, my lord. Will they have? But the fact remains on record is gone to approval of the appointments. My lord, in, in my humble submission, my lord, when in the earlier meeting the matter was taken up, my lord, maybe discussion was on a different angle, my lord, and somehow at that point of time they concurred with the matter. But no final resolution was adopted. In the second meeting, 
when the matter was again discussed my lord the, the member changed their view my lord they changed their opinion and took an all together different yeah. resolution my lord is that admissible in my humble submission the, the, the views can change in a meeting my lord under threat and intimidation of the chairman but there is nothing there is not even pleaded case my lord record. it's not even a pleaded case my lord <laughs> My Lord will take note of the fact that the members of this general council. Can I just conclude, my Lord? Yes, yes. <laughs> But my Lord, are a very high Lord, rank officer. To expand that argument, my Lord, if a resolution was actually adopted in the previous meeting, my Lord, then the question of reviewing would have come, my Lord. That once a resolution be adopted, whether GC can review its own resolution. Now you look, you look at what it says, my Lord. It's also informed that approval of five members, that is, Chief Secretary, was also I've already communicated to Colonel that the approval remaining was also sought for until the provision contained Rule 9 and 10. All the GC members endorsed the approval. Chairperson had to pray approval of GC for Secretary DST being Chairman Tech. That's all. It's just to, con- to convey that look, the GC has you know they give accorded the approval, and this is their their decision. No, my lord. So, my lord, something intervenes in between these two meetings, my lord. What intervenes in between that, that the chairman was not there? The, the inquiry meeting. report, my lord. What inquiry report? The inquiry report which we placed in the last office, my lord. <laughs> We listen to you for disposal, but um... <laughs> my lord, even if they it is placed before the after a general meeting, my lord, even if it is written that placed it before the chairman, could the chairman exercise any extra power over that over the decision of the general council? My lord, page twenty-eight of my account referred, my lord. Yes. A, uh, Department of Science and Technology report of the committee constituted to look into the recruitment process in Nectar. Twenty-eight page, page twenty-eight of the counter affidavit. Twenty-seven report of committee. Mail. Yes. Yes. It says, my lord, an internal committee was constituted under the chairmanship of Sri Sunil Kumar, Joint Secretary so and so, with Mr. M. Mohanty, scientific so and so, as members to look into the recent recruitment process in Nectar for the following posts: Chief Radio Technologist so and so so and so. After going through the facts and documents made available, the committee makes the following observations: In terms of provisions as available in the recruitment rules of the post, the method of recruitment was by promotion. Failing which by deportation, including short-term contract absorption. Failing which by direct recruitment. Instead of first making sincere efforts for filling up the post on deportation basis, the vacancies were filled up by direct recruitment mode. Rejection of applications received for deportation on grounds of NOC, visitors clearance, no non-availability of APRs, etc. does not hold justified as no efforts were made to get the same from department or nation of the candidates. The screening committee has also not recorded any observation reasons for. <coughs> Considering the candidates on direct recruitment basis without exhausting the other available mode of deportation in accordance with the prescribed recruitment rules for the respective posts, issuing of offer of appointment and letting the candidate assume charge of the post without the approval of the competent authority, that is, governing council, is a serious lapse on part of the institute. This is a major procedural lapse and which cannot be ignored. Rather, this committee is of the opinion that responsibility responsibility must be fixed as the appointments made were of Group A post that too of level 11 and above. It is also observed that one member of the screening committee, Sir Simon Fukun, Ad- administrative associate Nectar, is also one of the candidates who has applied for the post of senior administrative officer, which evidently tend to amount to conflict of interest. Nectar deviates the process of issuing appointment orders without approval of the competent authority and on ascertaining reasons behind it, Nectar justifies and rather tries to influence that its scrapping of the proposal will lead to litigation. This also corroborates that recruitment process is not transparent. The whole issue seemed to be orchestrated with ulterior motive of vitiating the recruitment process and select those only who are permanently working on contract with Nectar. It this also it is also surprising to note that it it may not be coincidence that against all these post advertise only the consultant contractual employees working in Nectar have been selected. Selection of four internal candidates who are already working in Nectar on contract basis does not appear to be a mere coincidence. Prime of SI. The internal candidates were given clear-cut preference over the external candidate. In view of the facts and circumstances, it is recommended as under the recruitment of four Group A posts, so and so, be immediately be scrapped immediately. The four candidates selected against the above post are internal candidates of Nectar, 
and that now, okay, person has got a report. What steps have you taken? Exactly. Malik? Person to this inquiry report, what steps have you taken? Malik, inquiry report was placed before the next governing council meeting, my lord. Then? And in view of the findings and recommendations of the inquiry committee, the uh, resolution was adopted to scrap the appointments, my lord. So why was that made an item the agenda that is so important? Well, in my humble submission, since the matter was discussed, my lord, in the, in the meeting, whether it comes as a proper how agenda. Do see, how do you see it discussed? The minutes don't reflect anything. Well, the minutes reflect. The they just see the scrap, that's all. Scrap, my lord. Doesn't see anything. Scrap in view of these findings, my lord. Does it say that? There's no reasoning. Are these other general council members uh, conscious of the, what this what this inquiry report uh, about inquiry report at all? There should have been some discussion because serious uh, accusations have been made against one of the persons also. Whether you take any steps again, whoever who the Simon Pokon or something, if you see that he's he, you know, he's one of the petitions, my lord. Whatever it is, nothing taken. Or the action which we have taken, my lord, is only to cancel their appointments. Well, no, 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 see, sir, the spawn is fixed for issuing of appointments for approval of the competent authority. <laughs> Uh, so soon after that, the matter is pending. Matter is pending for this one. Immediately after that, they have come to court. My lord, my lord, my lord, if I may submit, what my learned friend has just uh, read out about the internal uh, that inquiry committee. First, the question is why was the necessity for conducting an internal inquiry committee when the entire selection was done as per procedure by a duly considered selection committee? No, they, 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 what that, was no, the need so that that it, it can't be bothered. See, the only thing that uh, that is, comes out from here, that, that comes out, listen, listen, uh, listen, listen, is that uh, is is that yes, you see, the first one is that uh, uh, the matter group for promotion, feeling which by deputation. Yes. So now the thing is that there the presence of no the presence of a person, a screen committee, maybe who rejected offers these things for deputation that cause there's some. My my, I have already, during my submission, last submission, I pointed out, if we look at the advertisement, my lord, in the advertisement itself, at the bottom, it was very clearly written that the appointment will be first through deputation and promotion. There was no candidate who opted to apply for deputation. It is not that they did not try to do it. In the same advertisement, it was clearly written, the appointment will be, if we go through the uh, uh, advertisement, my lord. So that has been followed, that has been complied. They cannot say that it was not tried. And so far as promotion is concerned, it is a newly established organization where nobody was otherwise their regular post to be promoted available, to, to be promoted on this post. In the, when in the advertisement it was clearly written, applications were invited to be filled up on the no, no, chairman, chairman who, who's the chairman of this GC? Secretary Government of India, Department of Science and Technology, DST. When this so, and, and this and, and this internal committee is under the chairmanship of same department DST. It's joint secretary establishment DST. Yes. Nothing else to add. Have any authorities? Well, authority I placed on last occasion, my lord. Only that an appointment without prior approval, where prior approval is mandatory, my lord, is a nullity in law. What prior approval? Once it's passed by the GC. My lord, appointment letters have been issued much at prior in point of time, my lord. To the GC? To the through those candidates, my lord. No, no, not my lord. No, no. To not these prior. candidates, my lord. It was after. Of the appointment order was issued on. Post fact to approval has been given. Post fact to approval. Post fact to approval. Page 64 is appointment letter, my lord. 19 January 22. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. 
So appointment order is on 19 January 22, my lord. The first meeting was on the 18th April 22. Page starts 80, page 82, my lord. Page 82. Meeting held on 18th April 22. On the top itself. Is the meeting approving the appointment? Yes, sir. yes, my lord. No, see, executive council are very close to me, sir. He did 21 to 22. Come by, I was going to send again, sir. Read sub para 4A. Read sub para 4A. Read sub para 4A. This was brought to the notice of governing council. This resolution, this meeting here was held on 18th April 22, Malik. No, so you see this para 4A, okay, page Malik. 85. GC was applied the recruitment process in the group A, carrying P of so-and-so. This is concerns them, correct? Malik. The Actually, I mentioned good rules and rule of GC in terms of so-and-so, so we explain general for seeking approval of GC. Chairperson R. D. G. to clarify with the recruitment so had been followed in the matter. Yes, I mean, followed the matter. DG Netta assured the chairperson and all yes. other GC members that RRs have been scrupulously followed and all the procedure selection and of candidates have been met by the selection committee interview panel duly approved by the chairman nectar in a transparent manner score sheet of marks awarded by the selection committee duly signed by each member committee is available for perusal and records the scores of each candidate were displayed on the website of nectar not a single representation from any candidate has been received in this regard the office of appointment was sent to the candidates in order of merit following the pre precedent adopted by nectar in recruitment made earlier and approved by gc as well further the status of recruitment has already been brought to the kind notice of gc members through circulation by this letter number so and so dated 25th february 22 for approval for regularization of these appointments in terms of para 31 of service laws of by law of nectar as advised by dst while under secretary number so and so march executive council has already approved this recruitment during its meeting held on 21 to 22 so, my lord, what I am trying to submit, my lord, is that appointment orders were issued in the month of January. Then, the chairman, the director of Nectar, Shilong, my lord, he seeks post facto approval from the GC, my lord. Right. And he is appointing authority, correct? My lord, appointing authority is a governing council, my lord. But that is, he signs appointment letter. Right, Dr. General. He doesn't sign. DG signs. DG signs it, yes. But if that is, in my mind, that is only a communication, my lord. That GC has approved your, the appointment letter should, some, should be like that, my lord. See, then where is the earlier meeting to 19-1-22 then? Because you read this uh, point letter, page 60, 64, uh, second paragraph. In person's approval, the competent authority, Sri Rakesh Kumar Sharma, is hereby informed that she has he has been selected for a post of so and so. There is no approval, my lord, by the so competent then, authority. Then you mean to say that this this uh, what's written here is contrived? That person approval the competent authority. But if you say that this is 19-1-2022, and the first time this matter came for consideration is uh, when it was. When it was taken before the kind notice on 25 to 2022. 25 to so before that there was no consideration. No consideration. Then how can you say, how can the right general write that in person to approve a government authority? Even that is incorrect, Malad. There is no reference to which approval by which meeting or which resolution, which letter, Malad. I think we'll hold this matter, we'll hear it again. Because there's something else. Malad. Malad. I was expecting that it's cut and dry. That's why I posted today in supplementary list thought of, order, of passing the orders in court. Yes, uh, in the course of hearing, uh, certain issues have have arisen which need further consideration by this court. I'll do my own research. Okay? Yes, but if we, we come back with with additional materials if you can. That's only the dates we trouble the court. That's only thing. Only the dates. Otherwise, approval is there. Inquiry report might be a, you know, it might be a afterthought you know, to somehow, you know, to somehow make out a case for cancellation of recruitment. Once recruitment is done, we cannot. And even then, the manner has been taken in resolution also as any other matter. That also does not bode well. 
this. If it was such a serious issue, she had been taken in the general council again. As what has happened, this inquiry report should be placed. Should be placed they should be placed before the, the governing council. That this inquiry was conducted and this is the report has been placed. And this report is placed for the consideration. If that inquiry has to be accepted, inquiry report has to be accepted by the by the body which has approved the, the recruitment. After acceptance, then maybe some other action will come. But it cannot be that on any other matter, some kind of discussion is done under the chairman who has maybe thrust this under the noses. That, that you know, the whole recruitment process is annulled. On only the ground, the only ground is that you've shut out other people who might want to apply by, you know, by facilitating the, you know, the realization of the ad hoc employees to a recruitment process. That's all that the court can see. That is, but that the manner is, is which, the the in which is, you, you come back with the how the inquiry report, where can you, if you show records, how was it, was it, was it accepted by the governing council, the inquiry report? It can just be in the air. An inquiry is an inquiry. There has to be an authority that accepts that thing and, and acts on the findings. Whether it accepts or rejects it, it's up to the authority. But in this case, nothing. Inquiry report, we will not take cognizance of that also. It stands in it and may be made by any A, B, or C. But only things that the dates. Is the only with the dates would be that the dates, the dates, the dates the, were appointment. Not only dates, appointment the, the and the and second the factor, manager, only those four who are already working there. Manager. Doesn't matter. They are selected. Manager. Doesn't matter. They might be the fittest. Also, who knows? But the thing is only those dates. No, 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 Mr. Rakesh Sharma was working. Business development. He was not working there. He was. He had to resign his post. He was working in Meghalaya Business Development. We'll hear after one, Manas, one more issue, if I, if I may just come in, what yes. is rightly fallen from your lordship's fellows, that whether the inquiry report was accepted, but prior to that we have to go a step back and see whether the general council members, the governing council, whether it had approved of an inquiry. Because the inquiry sought to inquire onto an approval granted by the general council. So exactly. if somebody exactly. wants to say that you, you have been, you've been forced into passing some kind of resolution mothers, you would have to first take the approval of the general council to hold an inquiry in the first place. The general right. and his discretion could not have done it. They just think that's not, it's not really above board, the entire proceedings. Well, On the part will, of the director general, well, on we'll the part of the chairman. But well, we'll reconsider the bottom of it. We'll sit again and... No, yeah, reconsider means they're giving you an open field again to kick them out, out of the field. Into space. That is whatever. <laughs> whatever they could not do earlier, others now they will do it by permit procedure. You see, you have to. There are some kinds you have to lift the veil, like they say, you know. What is the reason that is? We don't know, but then we'll hear there, it again. Two two veils, my lord. <laughs> two veils, but it, but both. You see, on all the parties, but then the the boss in your court. Man. And a list of further hearing after, <laughs> after one week or two weeks, you come two weeks, one out. two weeks. After, after get some more material. After two yes, you bring up yes, this and so on, so on. Because but the proceedings are in Delhi, my lord. Pray for ten, ten days, ten days time. Ten days, two weeks, huh? If we sit again, any other urgent matters? Yes. Why is this nineteen matter only? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. My lord, uh, these are covered matters. Covered. What happened to SLP? It's still pending, my lord. Well, what happened was well, it was listed on 4th of September. Some of the respondents could not be served. So it was postponed only for that matter. My lord, uh, actually, the earlier judgment attained finality. It was they have went to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court dismissed that case. It was implemented. Then other technical categories, other technical categories approved this honorable court, your lordship. And Lana, the single judge allowed those cases. Division bench also allowed. Recently, his lordship, Justice Jingdo, also allowed two cases. Only these are the two, uh, two, two, two sets of uh, written. Which trade this Anil? My lord. Which trade? Uh, technical, uh, they are electrician. Electrician. Electrician trade, your lordship. They are the left out categories. Other 15 categories also confirmed. No, no, so, no, pass no, the, that order, let them test the if. Uh, that will be subject to my lord. That will be subject to my lord. Oh, that uh, uh, there, there my lord, what I was praying well, the final clarity on the entire my issue lord. will come from the Supreme Court, my lord. Very soon, my lord. All other categories already. When's coming up again? My lord, it was, on Monday it was listed, my lord. Only the direction is to serve them and file a complete affidavit that service is complete. Only for that, my lord. How many people are yet to be served? Well, there are. 
more than 500 dollars then but most of them have been served mallet only few were left out now. have someone they have entered appearance the others no, no one entered entered appearance no one entered appearance yet my lord, they can subject to your lordship similar. They come only for this matter, Mr. Chanda. My lord, only for this matter, my lord. Repeat it, unfortunately. Earlier, also, one day I stayed your lordship. <laughs> the lordship was there, it tried to take it uh, next day. But because of this, uh, your lordship was in another case, it took a long time. Then it was there, uh, got it done. Only, my lord, let them can, even after passing this order. That will be ultimately up to the uh, subject to outcome of the SLP and already implemented. The first case, SH1, they went to Supreme Court. They went to Supreme Court. I am asking benefit or extension of the benefit being a technical category, extension of the benefit of upgradation to the grade of Habildar. Why are you not part of the other other litigation? It is the first case you filed. The first one. First, first time they are coming. Yes. Because we are, coming we are seeking extension of the benefit of uh, Rita Pill, 50 of 2010, my God, which was implemented by the respondents. After 25 years. Which was implemented by the respondents. After 25 years? They're seeking relief in respect of 97 notices. My friend was there in the, 90, in the Rita Pill. 97, my Lord. My friend is in the, in the, in the Rita Pill, my Lord. They are he was there. He was, uh, he was, uh, uh, he has moved the Rita Pill. On behalf of? On behalf of Vinod of India. Where's the order, the appeal order? Well, I have given a bunch of judgment. I have given a bunch of judgment to your lawsuit in a, a, a compilation, my lord. In a compilation. Oh. And your lawsuit in the. Uh, in I the have a certain uh, problems that I have shortage of PS, that's why I can't my, you know, generate orders in chamber. My, that's the only thing. Otherwise, there's no problem. Yes. In the compilation of judgment, page 36, because your lordship in the division bench further given an order that all similarly situated should also be extended. I am covered by that order also. Uh, page 36, your lordship, in my compilation. Page 36. Yes, 36. Yes. Page 36 and in, in their activity in operation, all of the ground is that the other matters you are come to you para 24, page 47. That's all. Please. Yes, ma'am. So that's the only thing that the only thing that kept back was because of SLP. Otherwise, the judgment covers all the trades likewise. So, I dispose it, my lord. <laughs> yes. You don't need to come anymore, Mr. Chandra. We listen for two weeks. If the matter is not taken up from court, we dispose it off. You don't he is there. What is there? There's nothing to argue in this matter any further. My lord, on the next occasion, my lord. Yes, I am very much. Two weeks. I, I, I'm, I'm very much under pressure. Under pressure, my lord. That's your, that's your, that's your stock submission every time you come. <laughs> my lord, very yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Doctor Embassy submits that the SLP is yet to be taken up. Uh, no effective orders yet have been passed. The SLP. The appeal matter we adjourn for today. Stop. Uh, it's noted that the uh, instant matters are actually covered by judgments of this early Chandra's court. I went to serve justice this matter for two weeks. Yes. Well, to, after two weeks, by law. Yes. 45? 5th October, I will list after two weeks. Okay. Middle of October sometime? After 5th October. Yeah. I'll be better pleased because we have some uh, difficulties. After so 5th October. After 5th October. I'll take a date, my please. Much better. 45? Hearing from the uh, Please, Lordship. I prefer some more time, Lordship, in this matter. Do what? We are making a joint request, Lordship. Join, yes. in, join request? Well, join request. So I also have to accede to a joint request. <laughs> What's the matter about? So that uh, dad come benefits, retirement. Between the two wives, Lordship. Between? 
two wives? Husband and wife? <laughs> no, 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 no. Why about the respondent is claiming that uh, petitioner or wife is the husband? <coughs> okay, I'm going to go to the party. This is matter for two weeks. Yes. yes. Any urgent matter will sit at, at, after two otherwise, if anyone wants to take up a hearing? Yes. You, wanna, you, you have urgent matter? Yes. What's the matter about? The is the formation of the village, which has not been an aspect of the act, your lordship. So where's it's, Mr. Jikinta? He's sick, he's, he didn't catch him in the morning. Uh, you're right. I, I met him, but he <laughs> said. <laughs> this matter um, is uh, between the petitioner and uh, Sparma Santiu, who is. I am agree with the impune order, your lordship, nothing else. Does it have order, any Im implication to the council? No. We don't have anything to say, your lordship. No, we take it up at 2 at 2.15. Yes, your lordship. Any other matter? That's urgent. Uh, My lord, item number 46, no, is, 46 a, is, is the item in which lordship on the last occasion has directed me to take instruction, my lord. Oh, sorry, I have the instruction I have already in given case, because my senior like was not appearing in this right. matter, so lordship has particularly directed oh, yeah, me to yeah, yeah. So my lord, uh, my instruction is all the pensionary benefit including gratuity has been released. Yes, in fact, in the month of July, my lord. So my lord, this was not brought into yes. the... I have even given yeah, a copy, uh, my This case has become in correct source, my lord. Yes, so my, this should have been. You have any instructions? Uh, your, your Lordship, we have just received this uh, copy right just now. Your Lordship, as of right now, your Lordship, I do not have any instructions. Yes, the uh, MS Arakolni has produced a order of the Accountant General <coughs> indicating that. My Lord, page one is the pension, my Lord. In page two is the. Oh, it is. Yeah, um, I, MS uh, Arconito has produced a PPO hmm, dated 31-7-2023 indicating that the petitioner of uh, the petitioner in the uh, in PPO so the in favor made in favor of the petitioner for monthly pension stop uh what is this document Next my lord, page? Uh, page number one is a pension my lord it pension was payment order, yes. pension payment order so my lord the petitioner has been receiving from august from july itself my lord august september now is the third month my lord which which has been drawn by him since July July 31st my lord 31st 2023 it is uh, uh, from August my lord 31st Okay, yes. That is order so has been passed. Uh, there are some mistakes yeah, was there. Let me see clarification on the same. Man, no uh, clarification from your side. Man, you won't know anything. You from August, from August, my lord. Yes. Order is thirty first. Yes. Pension has been and what about August. next page? My lord, this is the gratuity, my lord. Sanction. So, my lord, this also was uh, given on the eighteenth of August. Most recently, my lord, in the month of yes, August. Sir. So, this has also yes, been like released. Stop a gratuity payment order dated. <coughs> dated what? My lord, on the top, my lord, eighteen has also been produced. Showing that the petitioner has been paid a amount of rupees one lakh thirty-seven thousand five hundred thirty-five only. Next paragraph: In view of the fact that pension payment orders have been issued, have been issued in favour of the petitioner, and also the gratuity has been paid, <coughs> nothing survives consideration. The petition the same is closed. From pension from August, I'm still drawing. Yes, August, August, yes, August. From August yes. not July, August. Yes. If the petitioner still aggrieved, he's at liberty to approach this court with a fresh petition. <coughs> yes. Number forty-seven, forty-nine. Yes. Forty-seven, forty-nine. Forty-seven, forty-nine. Yes. My lord, uh, <coughs> forty-seven. That uh, my lord, uh, finding. Well, 47 is some Fine. records uh, required, my lord. Court of inquiry along with the my lord has on the last occasion I heard that matter, my lord, that uh, finding of the court of inquiry has not been where we stuck. Whether the uh, petitioner has been blame made blameworthy or fake, 
certificate manner. So uh, it is the. Uh, I am praying for two weeks time. I will do this. Forty seven. Forty seven. To produce the records. Well. Forty nine. What time? What time? Next week or two weeks? Uh, as prayed by the council, the Dr. C. Council on 547, uh, for the two weeks I am granted production of the records. Uh, 49, this matter for two weeks. Yes, we come back for that matter. <coughs> Where are those people gone? Yes. <coughs> yes. <sir. coughs>